그냥 다 그냥 부럭부럭인 것 같아요. 시드 공간이 어. 크게 의미가 없는 것 같아요. 한 명은 상대형인데 약간 첫 경기 단판을 좀 무서워가지고 비조가 괜찮을 것 같기도 해서 빠르게 좀 가고 싶다라고 좀 어필하실 분 계신가요? 어, 홍병희 선수는 비조 아니에요? 괜찮은 것 같아요. 아유 괜찮다. 아니 아니요. 뽑아줘. 어? 뽑아줘? 동일 중인 세 명이 딱 성대형이랑 어. 경영형이랑 어. 성균이 형 이렇게 오! 자꾸 세 명한테 그 물어보더라고 저희 케이 한인방을 <웃음> 사실 그 이해가 안 되는 게 고민할 거면 나 뽑는 게 맞는데 오. 자꾸 고민을 하더라고요 왜 고민하지? 근데 테란 둘은 누가 더 잘할지 모르겠어요 아 하나만 물어볼게요 김윤준 선수한테 오 김윤준 둘 중에 누가 더 못하는 자 오늘 팀원의 설리연 이걸 왜 고민하세요? 현재 시, 박성균이랑 선수는 현역 때도 우승도 해본 DNA고 오. 우승도 해봤어요 오. 한 놈은 죽어도 죽어도 못 알려오는 놈아 아, 이걸 왜 고민해요? 김윤중이 점지해준 어, 어, 어. 괜찮은 현실적인 어, 조언이야 아, 일단 김윤중 선수가 만만하게 보는데 어. 저도 좀 이길 수 있지 않을까 싶어서 아, 그 이야기에서 힘을 얻고 힘든 상대들이라 아, 오고 싶으신 분 어? 있는지 혹시 자, 그러면 시조는 지금 모든 분들이 손을 들었거든요 와, 아무도 없어요 자, 그룹 비조가 인기가 어. 없습니다 지금 네. 왜 여기 조를 안 오고 싶은지 어. 모르겠어요 3번 라인으로 가면 이조랑 장훈철을 만날 확률이 너무 높거든요 상대적으로 여기 조가 훨씬 쉽거든요 지성이... 어. 어. 근데 제가 뽑으면 혹시 누구 뽑을 생각인지 저는 저거 중에 한 명? 저그? 이게 성공이 다 들어가게 되네 그렇죠 네. 종족을... 아, 돌장 장인철? 아, 잠깐만 장인철 어, 장인철 아, 때렸어요 아, 야, 야, 일단 태태전 좀 자신 있기도 하고 두 명을 좀 그래가지고 아, 솔직히 현재 형이 자꾸 약한 척하는데 대회 앞에 현재 형 만나기 싫거든요 그래서 좀 오기 싫었던 건데 뭐 경영이 형이 있어도 좀 괜찮은 거 같아요 그래서 이게 만족스럽다라는 네. 이야기를 네, 진짜 쉬운 상대가 없는 거 같긴 해요 근데 이 중에서도 그래도 보을 사람이 한 명밖에 안 보이네 제가 최근에 대회에서는 다 이겼던 선수가 있어가지고 하나! 그쵸? 저희가 제자리인 것 같아요 저는 비조가 좀더 괜찮을 수도 있을 것 같아요 여러 가지 고민도 없습니다 비조가요 오늘 와 비그룹은 인기 자체가 아예 없어요 왜 여기 조를 안 오고 싶은지 저 모르겠어요 Hello and welcome to Group B of the Round of 16 of ASL Season 17, brought to you by Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs. Following yesterday's opening games of the Round of 16, where Solki and Bisu succeeded in advancing out of Group A, we have another batch of players ready and up on the stage here ahead of Group B. Let's have a word with them. Hi. Let us begin with Mini. What you were hoping for in the group selection ceremony were Tier 3 and Tier 4 Zerg players. However, since there were none, you opted to pick Barracks. As you were picking him, you said, well, this is a player you're sure you can beat. I would like to hear your current thoughts on the matter now that a week of practice has passed. Well, honestly, I did not think I, I could beat him. Whatever happens, I was sure I could beat a Tier 3 or Tier 4 Zerg had we had any. I can't blame first Terran nowadays. Despite that, left with no choice, I picked him because he seemed like the weakest opponent. Well, that must mean the current makeup of the group with two Terrans in it doesn't quite tickle your fancy. I'm really struggling, so I tried to cram as much practice in as I could. Um, if I get to the round of 8 or the round of 4, I think I'll be able to regain my form, but I'm worried about the round of 16. Mentally strained burden is Mini right now as he's saying, let's talk to Barracks now. Hi. You were dying to go to Group A, but alas, you were not picked and ended up going to Group B instead. Seeing this group's lineup, how satisfied are you? However you look at it, all the groups in the round of 16 are difficult, uh, but seeing how I'm not in Group C or D, well, I'm satisfied with either A or B. Not the group you were hoping for the most, but certainly not the worst one either. Got it. Let's now turn to Royal. Hi. 
You said you were not a big fan of facing Mini in a tournament setting, but Group B is fine because Barracks is here too. You've gone so far as to pick Hero, whom you've been beating in tournaments. Is that conviction you had back then still, still here? Well, my practice has been going really well this time. I'm confident. And going up against this confident royal, we have Hero. Hello there. During the group selection ceremony, you mentioned Group B is not so bad because there are no Zergs in it. And while you've been struggling a bit against Terran in competitive play, you said this is an opportunity to practice said matchup. Thoughts? I mainly focused on versus Terran and practiced in go too poorly. I can feel somewhat confident today. Saying you practiced ZVT mainly, what ratio was it? Who, who did you practice against? Honestly? I thought about it and I think I should be able to advance just winning against Terran, even if I were to lose to Mini, so I guess... 70% against Terran? 70%? It seems to me Hero is low-key hinting that he's confident he could take down Mini if they were to run into one another. Let's take a look at what focus points we have for Group B. Mini, please grab the mic. Looking at your head-to-head -head win rates, wow, what a ceremony of opposites. You have a crushing lead over Royal, 7-1, to one. however, you have 3 wins and 7 losses against Hero. I was wondering as to your thoughts on that, what with Hero saying well, he's focused mainly on versus Terran, saying that if he win, if he wins ZVT, he's going to advance. But to be honest, I also focused on versus Terran. In any case, there's two of them here. Um, beating them means moving on, so I played PVT. Now in tournaments, starting off right is of utmost importance. Against someone you've already beaten, you have confidence to keep going with the right builds. And against someone you've lost to, well, it's the opposite. I was off to a bad start against Hero, and that's why he has an edge over me. Whereas against Royal, I beat him once, and I'm still riding that momentum. We'll have to see what kind of a start Mini gets off to today. Let's talk to Barracks now. Before you knew it, this is your fifth round of 16 in the ASL. However, alas, this is as far as you've managed to get. But the force you brought with you to the round of 24 had quite the impact. Is it possible this is your first time to break into the round of 8? Is what I'm thinking. You must be somewhat expecting that yourself. I thought that to myself last time that maybe I could go to the round of 8, but it was too difficult. Every season, I keep getting better. And I keep thinking about the round of eight. Well, maybe this is it this time. Mini is saying that getting off to a good start is important. And he's got that in the back of his mind going into this game against you. What would you say to that? I, pre I prepared for everything this time. Uh, not just one match, uh, but with this mindset to just do my best. It seems I'll be able to have a good showing today. He had put in a ton of prep work ahead of the round of 24 and is likewise someone to, uh, someone to look forward to this round of 16. Let's now turn to Royal's point of discussion. This is an interesting one. It was three seasons ago in season 14 where you ended up in the same round of 16 group D as Hero, Mini and Action and you went on to win that season getting out of your round of 16 uh, group in first place at that. Thinking back to that time, you must be thinking to yourself, well, this season ain't so bad, is it? Um, even though that, that might not be the case, it is something that I think about when I'm losing. Um, I'll, I'll think of those good memories and try to do well today. And you brought up my head-to-head -head against Mini. Honestly, that's when I was pretty bad. Oh, the then Royal and the now Royal are different. Yeah, I'm thinking today might be different. A 1-7 to record against Mini is just meaningless numbers, you say. Ooh, got it. Let's take a look at the final point. With Hero this time, the season we were just talking about, season 14, was when you and Mini last faced off against each other, uh, where you beat him 2-1 to one in the elimination match, moving on to the quarterfinals.
You are still riding that wave high with eight consecutive victories against Protoss. I'm curious if you're still as confident in that matchup. Versus Protoss is real difficult nowadays. I'm losing a lot, but in tournaments, weirdly enough, Protoss players kind of wither away. So, in a tournament setting, yeah, I have some confidence against Protoss. Still having faith in his ZVP is hero. To close things out, let's hear the resolutions of our Thor players ahead of Group B. Royal? I'll do my best. No regrets. Mini? I'll pierce through the round of 16 and go far. Barracks? I'll show good games today. Hero? I'll show good games today. Looking forward to some cool matches from you four. Thanks for the interview. You're watching Group B of the Round of 16 of ASL Season 17, brought to you by Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs. Which two of our, of our players will be joining the Round of 8 roster? Well, let's kick things off and find out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another day here at the ASL. We just wrapped up Group A, and now we're going into Group B. Uh, again, been an amazing season so far. So good to be back into uh, competitive StarCraft 1 casting artosis. Yeah. I miss ASL when it's not on. Yeah, yeah, and I'm happy to be in the round of 16 as well. It's great to have those best of threes to decide who moves on and who gets eliminated. Uh, you know, Group A was a lot of fun. I think this one is actually a little bit better group. In my opinion, I think it's a, a really fun one with three players that definitely can advance and a big, big underdog in Barracks. The only tier three player to make it to the round of 16 this season. That's right. Of course, you've got Mini in this group. He's a player that um, at times has looked like he's going to be the next iteration of how everybody's going to play Protoss, but he's also faltered a lot. He does seem to struggle uh, in some of these group formats, so I'm curious to see... Uh, what kind of games he's going to bring us here today. He does seem to occasionally be pretty risk-prone when I think it would be better to be maybe more conservative or risk-averse. Then again, you know, the way many approaches, the, the many of the matchups in general is a little crazy. But I got yeah. my eyes on him. Yeah, yeah, you know, there is some volatility involved, and uh, we're going to see if any of that happens to him here today. I mean, a best one against Barracks, that can be dangerous. Dude, Barracks can beat anyone in a best of one, that's for sure. I don't sure. hold much hope for him in the best of threes because I do really feel all three of these players are head and shoulders above him. But we'll see. You, you never really know what he's going to bring to the table. But I'm looking at this group, and I know Royal's a really great tear, and I love watching him and everything. I really do feel like we're going to have Mini and Hero go through tonight. I just think that they are... I mean, these guys are both, like, top four players, in my opinion, like, in the world. Oh, yeah. I, you know, Royal looks so strong, but I think if I had to pick two, probably Hero, probably Mini. Yeah. Uh, Hero, probably first. I feel like oh, he okay. has just been so strong. Mm -hmm. So on top of it, but um, you know, with Mini, he has had these moments where he just burns out at tournaments early on too. That that is true. But if we have like a Mini Hero winners match, I could see Mini taking that down. Like his his Protoss for Zerg is yeah. probably overall the best in the world. Uh, you know, I think like him and and uh, Bisu, you know, Rain when he's in shape. These guys are all really good against Zerg and. Mini, I feel like he'll have something really good planned for Hero because Hero is one of the most dangerous players in the whole tournament. And if Mini can, you know, get out of this group, he won't have to play him for the rest of the tournament until the finals, right? Yeah, and, you know, uh, Mini, a very DT style uh, PVZ or fast expand DTs versus like the Bisu plus one Zealots plus one Corsairs. Um, so it'll be fun to see what he's got to offer here. But to start this off, we're going to have Mini going up against Barracks here. <coughs> And, yeah. you know, the thing with Mini is he's always had an abusive style of PVT. He had <laughs> probably the biggest range of Nexus first openings, but he's more than happy to cheese. He is very good at, you know, a lot of the more standard styles of play. So I think this is kind of a nightmare uh, Protoss player to go up against. Best of one, best of three, best of five. I don't think it really matters if you're a Terran fighting Mini. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's incredibly dangerous in the matchup. I'm not sure... 
what type of style he's going to bring. Sometimes we've really questioned in the past, Tasteless, what Mini will bring, especially to best of ones. Because, like, for instance, right here, he's actually just better than Barracks, I think, basically at everything. But he might do something wild like Nexus first one gate or proxy gate, right? Like, And if you're doing stuff like that, any Terran in the world is going, uh, you know, any pro Terran in the world is going to have a shot at beating you because, you know, you there are things that are going to counter it pretty hard. And that's what I worry about with Mini. That's where I feel like he could go wrong here tonight. Yeah, that is always the issue with Mini. Uh, granted, every tournament is another opportunity to kind of revamp how to navigate um, some of these more, um, I guess, volatile or turbulent or potentially turbulent points in the in the tournament. I know what you're saying, though. Like, I, I feel like if Mini just plays a standard yeah. TVT, it should be no problem. Yeah, exactly. Like, just go go gateway expand. Don't go nuts. Get a, get Reavers. Uh, yeah. Not even too early. Get him in the mid game and play it out, go carries if you want. I think he's got this. But again, in a best of one, you never know. Terran, of course, does have cheese up their sleeve as well. Uh, but this is going to be a fun group, guys. I'm super excited for this one. Let's get into this first game here on Apocalypse as we uh, watch ASL Group B round of 16 unfold. Okay, we've got Mini up here at 12 o'clock in the top. And Barracks all the way down here at, I guess, 4 o'clock in the bottom right here uh, in this spawn. Now, I don't know if Mini's going to do it, but Mini is the guy that I learned this technique from on this map. You probably heard me talk about it before in PVTs, but I have seen him go for Pylon on 9 at his uh, entrance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, like where his natural is, is what I'm trying to say. And then just try to gas steal the bottom right spot yeah. because two out of the three spawns on apocalypse have gases that point towards the entrance mm -hmm. which means if you're going to play a probability opener which some people would m might say that's not the best way to approach this in a best of one but if you were to play a probability opener there's a one in uh two chance every game you get a free gas steal and yeah. Terran's already in a very <laughs> uncomfortable spot but this game artosis he's not doing it and i'm so glad because like <laughs> we said before the game started we think if M mini wins here it's off of just, uh, you know, a, a vanilla game of PVT. Yeah, I, I agree with that assessment, but that type of build is how he, he likes to play. You know, he's kind of the guy who made Nexus first cross spawn gas steal, right? Like, <laughs> the, the literally yeah. the strongest thing that exists is is one of his builds, and it's only you can only hit it 33% of the time. So uh, he is like he's someone who takes those percentages and will really try to push them. And, you know, that's that's what I worry about with him anyways. Uh, taking a look here, Barracks going for the 11 gas, like a very, very fast gas there. So he's going to be able to get a Vulture out quickly. Uh, so good for Mini that he didn't do anything like a Nexus first because this build is kind of like uh, tailor-made to, to punish that. You, we were talking about odds earlier. StarCraft is a game where you can play the odds game. You don't mm. have to, but there are a lot of ways to do it. Sometimes you're in a position where you may have to play uh, an opening odds-based just because you didn't get the full amount of info or, or your build order uh, operates really well versus certain mm. things but is you know easily countered by other things. Mm -hmm. In the very early days of StarCraft, virtually all of the really great players switched into poker and made a lot of money. Yeah. And did very well. And I think it's because there is crossover from um, playing build order openings in StarCraft 1 with incomplete information, mm -hmm. like a hand of poker, and trying to see what your opponent's doing. And uh, a lot of times you can win just kind of bluffing or, or getting a read on what their hand would be, or in this case, what their build order would be, and how you use your build or your hand against theirs. You know, a lot of people try to liken StarCraft to chess, and there's definitely some similarities, but I oftentimes feel like it's closer to poker in a lot of ways. And yeah. As, as you said, yeah, we've had we've had a lot of that crossover, but uh, definitely it, it feels that way. You know, as you get better at StarCraft and understand it more, there's, like, so much about the hidden information and taking risks, taking edges, uh, you know. It, and, in fact, a lot of the terminology we use is from the poker world, like, all in, right? Um right yeah, so yeah uh 
I, I think that that is such a big part, and that's part of, that's probably, Mini might be the best in the whole world at that aspect. I think he probably is. I think he, especially for the Koreans. Yeah. Like, he's he's very good at this style of play. Um, but I'm glad he's not really approaching it like that this time around yeah. here. You can play the game on a very mechanical level. You can play it on, on a kind of macro development level. Uh, when I say mechanical, I, I kind of meant like cheesing or, you know, attacking, trying to have good control. But there's a lot of different aspects to the game. Uh, in this game, Mini, he's trying to get some intel. You know, he didn't... This Dragoon is not able to confirm much of what's going on on that side of the map, which is always a little bit scary for the Protoss. He went yeah. for a pretty quick Nexus. I think that was a Nexus after the first Dragoon started. Yeah, before range as well. No range started yet. Yes. And if you look at Barracks' build, he's doing the fastest Vulture drop that exists. This is a one base Vulture drop, uh, and he's in the perfect position for it, right? Like the, the back of Mini's main is pointing towards him. And he's got his Marines way out in the front, so you can kind of put a little pressure on, try to draw the Dragoons to the front, drop the Vultures in the back, and potentially get a lot of probes. This could be really bad, especially with Dragoon range not being done. The difference between Dragoons with range and Dragoons without range is crazy. Uh, it's so hard to catch up to anything. Mines are a much bigger threat as well. We did see a Robo Bay made early, but I'm guessing that's not to get Observers. That's there was actually a period where people did mess around with this a lot, but generally speaking, early robo always means reaver, shuttle reaver, which actually this doesn't pair well against what Barracks is doing. You can get dropped, hit really hard, and then also a Wraith can come out and shoot down the shuttle and reaver. So this is like a really good build here. For yeah, Barracks. yeah. Barracks's build definitely counters what Mini's doing pretty hard. Uh, and this is this is the danger of best of one. You know, uh, Mini had mm -hmm. such an early pick, picked up Barracks, thought this would be the easiest match. <clears throat> but looking at it, like, there is some real potential here for damage. And look where he's flying in. He's flying into, like, a very different location. Oh. There's no vision there right now. That was a perfect drop. <laughs> oh, dude. That Mini is, is I've never screwed. seen that before. Holy crap. I never even noticed that was out there. That's crazy. So now he's got a bunch of mines planted. Actually, one mine detonates two others, so not quite the same man minefield over here. But again, Dragoons without range. Oh, no! well. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, best of one. Here we are. This is crazy. Oh, he's dead. He's man. dead. The game is over. He's dead. There's no coming back from that. It doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't Snow microing his reaver while he did everything else. I still feel like uh, Barracks is going to win this. Right? With very little info, you, you you have to factor in that there's a, a possibility of a drop like this. You know, you don't know that there's another command center yet, so this is a little bit risky. He was basically playing as if, uh, you know, it was a bluff, uh, and that there was no pressure coming here. Now, it looks like, ooh, got in there. It gets right back out. That was an interesting journey for that vulture. <laughs> it flew all the way in. Oh, is he not going to go back home? I think he, I think he wants it, to see if he can... I, I think he thought a scarab might be following it, so like just picked it up real quick because it was like very close yeah, to the, right. that range. But yeah, that dude, that's wild. That's wild because this is like, how do you lose here as barracks? Like a very well executed do. build. He's killed so many probes. You know, if Mini comes back through this game, I will be shocked, shocked. Well, that wraith came out. I was mentioning that earlier on. So that you really can't be aggressive with a shuttle and a reaver. By the way, shuttle speed is the speed of a wraith. A wraith can moving shot a shuttle with speed. So there's not even a workaround. There's not even like a way to tech up so that you can outmaneuver, um, uh, you know, the, the wraith itself. So yeah, there's no real recourse here for Mini. Mini has to basically continue in a, a race where he's already really behind. In some sense, Barracks is lapping him economically. Um, so this is rough. Now, it should be an easy game from here on out for Barracks, but I would say Mini is such a better player than Barracks. Maybe he can try to get uh, some good shots with the Reaver if Barracks attacks early. I think if I'm Barracks, I want to stay back and just, like, grow. Just keep making SCVs. If he just keeps making SCVs and putting down factories, <clears throat> yeah. there should be no way Mini can catch up. But we do see players do some somewhat counterintuitive moves here. Yeah. Yeah, if if he does something like attacks too quickly or cuts that SCV count and just tries to go for like an all-in, I think just like a high economy five factory 
uh, look at the situation, probably just move out, like get your get your Goliath range and everything like that. It seems like the game is a game of math at that point. You know, you just have right. this very robust thing you're doing and your opponent needs like a complete miracle to stop you. And look at that. Yeah, he throws down five factories. I'm, you know, he already has plus one going. I'm sure he's going to just get those other upgrades. Make sure you have siege mode. He has a wraith. So like I could see him maybe trying to optimize out of Goliaths, but I feel like Goliaths are going to be solid here as well. And yeah, I, I mini really... He's in such a bad spot. It'll be interesting to see what he thinks is his best chance at coming back, though. Yeah, I, I totally agree with this. The, the uh, basically just squatting on like five or six factories, powering up and just waiting because I think either way the Protoss can't do anything. I think there's no way that you can attack for sure into the Terran. Yeah. But if you grow, you die to a push. I think if you sit on two bases and try to powered match him, you die. Yeah. Unless there's the greatest reaver shots of all time. So. This is going to be um, a very quiet game, I think, for the next couple of minutes until Terran tries to make a move. There's an observer outside of the entrance here for Mini, so he can basically try to spot and see if there's going to be an expand or not. And look at this. Mini's going to try to expand. Well, uh, you know, I guess you have to do something here. Like, you can't just sure, you can't yeah. just mass up on two bases, like you said. There's there's really not a, a great choice here for Mini. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my brutal. God. Oh, he lost about half the HP on the Reaver there. Yeah, that's, man, that hurts. Like, he needs everything to go right for him. So anytime anything goes wrong, it's like, it already feels like the game is over. So uh, I, I hope that he can still find a way to take some good engagements. Like, honestly, I'm scared because if he does end up losing this, which is looking likely at the moment, he has to play either Royal or Hero in the loser match, which is like, oh, God, these are three players that should probably be in the round of eight. I It's it's a very bad way to start this group out. Yeah. That is for sure. Yeah. Um, like you were saying earlier, there, there's really no right move because everything feels pretty much losing. We do have a little bit of drops and harass coming in here. By the way, guys, this is a great game where you actually can learn from. I think we've all been in games where we have... Like, let's say a great drop or a great rush and a bunch of damage is done, and then we end up overdoing it and losing anyways. Mm. You, the game becomes a lot simpler once you get this incredible advantage. And all you have to do is kind of keep up with what you need to do on your end, and they should be pretty far behind. Yeah. Well, right now, uh, you know, Mini is trying to hold this high ground. He has the two Reavers, right? So, like, he has some things going on. Maybe he can take a good engagement as these units try to come up the ramp. But the anti-air is very, very good here. There's a lot of siege tanks. Obviously, Zealot Legs is far off, so it's just like Dragoon Reaver, which is like easier to engage, I would say, as Terran. Hey, there's there's a couple really good uh, Reaver hits right there. Picks off a tank, damages a couple more. He's not losing anything yet. The Reaver is the only thing that's going to make the math a little bit fuzzier with this. If it's just Dragoons and Zealots, even with shuttles uh, full of Zealots dropping on tanks, Terran probably wins, but if you get a couple Scarab shots that really connect, that really take out big chunks of units, that might do it. Well, that's going to have so to be So the Vultures what he... have run past. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Artos. Yeah, go he, 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 that's exactly what he's going to have to do here. And look at this. The Vultures, he's going after the Vultures, which means that we just see Barracks move across the map with his army. The Reaver's trying to slow that down, but of course the Wraith kind of forcing that back as well. Forcing a few sieges at least. Oh, man, still two vultures in the back there, although they are glitched oh. a little bit, uh, luckily for him. Yeah, they're not attacking. He'd have to hit hold position again to unlock him. Um, okay, looks like, unfortunately, Barracks is not going to get any value out of those. That's really too bad, but this goes to show you how badly Barracks is, uh, you know, busy multitasking mm -hmm. back at home to try to crank this out. Now, again... Um, Couple good scarab shots. Oh, he's got the second shuttle, so he might do the zealot unload and then try to, um, as the dragoons and the other zealots come in, try to get some targeting off here. Oh, hold on. I think he has actually three reavers. Never mind. He drops one reaver oh. there, and he's gonna send these into the main. Okay. Uh, I, I, I feel like he's just trying anything he can at oh, the moment. I, whoa, wait, DTs. I know this. He's gonna, he's gonna try to go for the scanner in the main. Oh my We've god. We've seen this before. Dude, that's oh big my god! Brain. And the, 
If he can do yeah, this, we saw if he him can do kill... this in another ASL. Oh my god, the DTs are actually going to work on these tanks. Unfortunately, a scan does go off, so Barracks will clear those, but he kills one of the scanners. Dude, this is... I'm getting actual chills right now. This is crazy. If he can pop all this... Look how many SCVs he's killing as well. This is insane. So now he, now he has... Well, there's turrets being made, so this is, you know, this oh, kind of counters yeah. the DTs, but he, he can basically curb progress in there. He can take this one out. Now, I think with the natural also being killed off, there's not a whole lot that you can do here, but the genius is sort of there, right? I mean, he, if he just has DTs up here, maybe he can get in there and try to kill some more SCVs. You can see mines are being uh, dispersed basically everywhere, so anywhere that they drop, they should be hit, except for back here. Oh, look at, oh my oh, God, oh, how is he killing oh, so many oh, SCVs? Oh my God. Dude, wait, if he kills, like, wait, I mean, you're going to turret wait, wait, push, no, no. but he, he there's no money. Dude, there's like no money. There's no money. I think Mini might be able to take this back. Oh, and there's actually a mine behind where the natural is. Oh, my God. He's it's like he's Mr. Magooing his way through these spots with mines. All right, he finally loses that one. This is absolutely wild. He has oh. done so wait, wait, wait. much damage. He's going to kill the scanner. I think that's out of range from the turret. He still has this reaver. I can't believe what I'm watching right now, Tasteless. There's almost no SCVs left. Mini is mining more than Barracks right now. Yeah, he has more workers. The scanner's going to burn down unless he gets an SCV. He doesn't have a lot of SCVs, by the way. Yeah, repairing Another things shuttle. actually is really expensive at the moment. He bring Yeah, the other yeah. shuttle coming in? Dude, if... Wait, if if that scanner died? Does he have oh, a scan? Oh, he had to scan. Oh. He had to scan. Okay, he's got to back up, he, but he, he might not oh. have another scan in there. Oh, he bled off two more DTs. Yeah, more DTs in the base. He's doing it base. again. Dude. Hold up, hold up, Artie. I the can't. scanner's going to go down. Okay, he kills the Nexus. Okay, he kills the Nexus. There is 400 minerals, though. <gasps> Dude, this is the craziest this game. This is the what craziest is going on? game. DTs going after these oh. siege tanks right now. It, it, what is, is he doing in the main base? I feel like that's the only thing that matters. Oh, oh there's enough vultures here. I think Barracks can probably just finish it with offensive mines. Right? Like, if you just spread all your vultures and start laying mass mines, Mini starts his Nexus again. Dude, this, like, win or lose, this is one of the most brilliant games I've seen. Mini really well, is we something saw him else. Do, we saw him do something like this. I think it was literally in the last season, but this is just on a level where I'm like, oh, this is, like, exactly what you always do versus the guy that just powers on two bases. It's, like, this tactic that's just so strong. Yeah. By the way, the CC is floating away. It's got 125 HP. <laughs> the vultures are going to come in. Now, he's going to kill the vultures here, too. I don't know how many probes are going to be left over, but I think there's still more probes. Oh, gosh. He gets one Dragoon out here to fight the Wraith. Oh, my God. Wait. What am okay, I hold looking on. at? Right. So I'm he... having a hard time. Are there, are there more Goliaths out? Oh, are there he's... any more Goliaths? Uh, No, I don't think there's <gasps> Goliaths. Oh. Oh, there is one. Sorry. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Okay, so the two DTs going after these tanks. The tanks he's going to go for the probes. Oh. Oh, he's going to just try to oh, dive he... bomb on the, the, the... He got the one oh, more he picks scan. up one. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. now he has... Okay, there's one probe and one DT in the shuttle. Okay. Oh, and there's no Nexus. He's actually going for a draw now. It's impossible for Mini to win this game. Uh, I think, yeah. I think, I think a draw is also impossible. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's finally impossible. But that was unbelievable. Everything went wrong that for me was... this game, and he almost magicked his way out of it. Magic is real, Artosis. Magic is real. His spell magic barely is real. When failed. you go to a magic show and you see him using the sleight of hand, it's actually real magic. <laughs> okay? Your quarter, your quarter did disappear. So, hold on. If he kills the scanner, is it still a hundred percent impossible for? Oh uh, no, there uh, is. Barracks a cannot afford there. another scanner. Yeah, he no, can't he can't afford, afford to make it. Oh, but is there any like? Can he kill these three SCVs? Well, no, no, no. He, he, you know, he, he can afford. He has SCVs. What am I saying? Oh my God! Did, did, for did, how did long? Oh. Whoop! Magic, real dude. Magic. This is wild. magic. <gasps> real magic, real. Magic, real. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I can't even speak. Like I'm just, I'm holding my this breath right crazy. now. Watching. Crazy. There's one SCV 
or two SCVs and four minerals. Two SCVs and four minerals. And he oh, and there's has a Dragoon DTs here. And shuttles. This could be a draw. He's got... Well, no, I think... Tasers. How many mines does he have in each of the vultures? Yeah, I'm not sure, does he have but extra mines? we are getting very close to a draw, I think. He has to go back and clear that, obviously, but he needs to kill the last SCV as well. And the thing is, he doesn't know how many minerals are left. And he can't be 100% sure there's not another SCV somewhere, but he needs to stop this, and he needs DTs being microed heavily to kill off that Can army that's attacking his buildings. Could I guess Mini has 121 minerals, so he could make another DT either. Oh, there's a Wraith. I thought the Wraiths were all killed. Yeah, I did too. I guess that one the ran wraith, away. He might have lost track of that one in the game. This happens all the time when you get crazy games like this. You come back and you find like some obscure unit you sort of forgot about on the corner of the map. Well, it's he kills now. the Wraith, so the <laughs> shuttle exploit is still going on. Uh, there are no other buildings on the map only for Protoss, only the ones in his main. If he he wants to kill this, then go back and clean everything up. Now, he has a DT here that he's microing really heavily. Look at this. He's picking off mines. Look at this. He drags mines out of the way. He's getting the mines away from the building so that his DT can actually fight. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen, Taysom. This Give Mini another ASL. He wins this ASL. Yeah. We're canceling the season. The Tastos' we, version wins this. will be just, and Mini is the champion of <laughs> ASL 17. We can do what this we want. This is really just ASL power rankings right here, man, of who's the greatest. Uh, I'm like, I know we didn't win the tournament, but did you see the round of 16? So in case you guys are confused, you can pick up and detonate a mine and pull the DT away. Dude, he, oh, it's just there's really hard to more. do. There's one more SCV with two health. If he finds that right now, he has a Dragoon in that other... Uh, he has a Dragoon in the other shuttle. Keep in mind oh, that the Terran units shuttle, are not okay. going to heal. They can't repair. They cannot repair right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Look at this. The DT is working on the tanks. He's still got plenty of buildings to work with. He's got a mine right over here. He could try to bait over. He, his observer sees where the mines are now, right? So... Yeah. Oh. I think he, I think he kept alive. Dude, he's so good. Oh, my God. Look at this. He's, like, surrounded Eric's by mines just, right now. He started at another uh, SCV. Is the Academy alive? Why is he not just making a scanner? I don't know why you'd even make an extra SCV. I think you make the SCV because you're scared. Like, honestly? Oh, get that goon I back! Think get you that make goon the scanner because you're brave. Go, 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 go! Okay, he's going to kill this tank. Does he have time to if kill all these? If he destroys the buildings, the game ends. Just a reminder, guys. Oh, yeah. oh my God. If you kill all the buildings, the game will end for Protoss. Oh! So there's one DT right now, but there's two SCVs. Oh, and look at this. He, he keeps the, the other command center floated at the natural to make it look like that's where his only command center is. So that, that uh, it's it's oh. in Mini's natural. Is, is So that's like the uh, red herring command center. Wait, there's 11 supply for Mini? What is the supply? It's, it th I think I see three shuttles, one, one observer, observer, one shuttle. He has three DT. shuttles, I think. And does he only have one DT? Oh, he has a probe. Oh, okay. That's so what? smart. Oh, yeah. Dude. The probe can kill the mines. Of course, the probe does not set off the mines. He's... The... What if this game doesn't end just yet, Artosis? It feels like we're actually not quite done. It is possible that we get a draw. Yeah, I think oh my Barrett's, God, yeah, that because of the hidden base, it. might still win this. Mini needs to get like down a there turret, right now. A turret and a vulture over here at his base. A tank's coming across the map. Ah! He's got him distracted. Oh, no. Remember that. I mean, I guess we all know, but it's worth pointing out that hull damage permanent. Mini's going to see this base. By the way. But he sees it. There's not a lot there. Look at the cameras. Mini there's not a lot slouched there. down all the way at this point, and he just found the base. Dude, what a He's making game. a beeline with the shuttle down there. Oh, man, he's cursing. Oh, man. I think Barracks was really smart to have one command center come up here like that. Yeah, he tricked him. He tricked him. He only had one SCV and four minerals. He's going to GG. Oh, dude, that one was... One of the greatest games in StarCraft history. One of the greatest ever. Wow. Ever. If ever. He, if he had gotten a draw out of that, I think that might be my favorite game I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I wanted...
just run up and down the block a couple times. Yeah, yeah. That game was so good. I and dude, Karen, so Minnie's Minnie's the loser that's screwed man. up. That screwed up. Mini is a thousand yeah. times better than Barracks. Come on. Yeah, it took that game to <laughs> convince Artosis. <laughs> um, look, man, Barracks had an amazing performance, as did Mini. Mini, I'm really learning a lot from from him. The whole uh, go for the scanner play. To be, and then just, you know, sandbag the rush with DTs. Mini probably thought he was going to have a, a forced draw. I'm not even sure what the rules are for ASL if we're going to draw in a best of one there for this phase of the tournament. Maybe a rematch? Yeah, you just rematch. Um, so, wow. A lot of drama already, and we're just getting started here in Group B, guys. Dude, if only he had found that command center a little bit earlier, we would have actually had a draw. And, like, from the worst position you can really open with, right? Like, that, no one's ever this far behind early on. They're going to show how many probes he actually ended up killing. Dude, the mines. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, th just getting this many workers right away is just so devastating. Protoss doesn't really have the tools to try to fight this either. That mine hit, uh, that took out at least four or five probes yeah. right there with that alone. And we're seeing probes drop. Two at a time here. Wow. And from there, it was this big push from Barracks. We, we, you know, we were saying it for most of the cast that this is a pretty straightforward loss. But then Mini showed just this level of genius um, going for the scanners and dragging the game out with the DTs and then dropping constantly inside the Terran's main. Yeah. It was yeah. something else, man. Guys, short break. Coming up next, Hero versus Royal. Today, Today, 메시가 되고 싶어. 알고 싶어. 너의 특별 할인값. 만들어 봐. 네 의자에 꿀자세. 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 Couldn't be back sooner, man. I'm so hyped from that last game. I just can't stop thinking <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah, that yeah. was just something else. It's going to be hard to top that for a long time, but we can try. Dude, I, I actually just want to, like, uh, talk about that for the rest of this group. Like, instead of casting the next games, let's just talk about Mini and how great he is. Yeah. And you watch. He'll, like, go let's out. Talk about Mini he'll while lose we, 0-2 after this, habits. and, like, he's just out of the tournament. But, like, <laughs> you got it. Unreal. Unreal.
Well, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, Royal versus Hero. We already saw that anything can happen in a best of one. Um, you know, Royal <laughs> certainly could get out of this group. I think Artosis <laughs> and I are on the same page. It's still probably a mini Hero uh, a victory, but let's see, man. Maybe we end up with Royal beating Hero here, and we get a TVT in the winner's match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So someone uh, said the other day, Tasis, that I thought was funny, is like, don't we think that uh, Royal, his glasses look like they're glasses with stickers of his eyes on them? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Did we to say that? No, 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 we didn't say that. Just some guy in the chat said that. I wanted to share that with you, Tasis. I oh thought that was so God. funny. <laughs> yeah. We always say that it looks like a warlock is controlling his brain. <laughs> yeah. It's his look. He's just yeah, got like, it does look really like his... thick glasses, so it just, you know, it's got that look to just it. Just distorts his eyes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, man, he's uh, he's a, uh, yeah, man, he does have those eyes. It's undeniable, yeah. man. I see it every time <laughs> we look at him. Yep. Those eyes are, <clears throat> there it is. So, man, this is going to be a fun match. Yeah. I cannot wait to see who's going to come out on top. Again, I still can't believe that last game that we just saw. I don't know. I got a big smile on my face. Yeah. This yeah. has been so fun. Well, it's already the best day of ASL in years. Uh, <laughs> we're yeah. only one game in. So uh, this TVZ should be good. Royal, his win rate is absurd against Zergs, and it's based off of very tricky builds. We're going to see what he has here against Hero. Uh, he comes in with the most precise TVZ kills that we've really ever seen. Let's see if he does it here. Hey, Royal up here at the top, in the center, Hero in the bottom right in the red. Ooh, I'm, I'm excited. I actually want to see Royal, I mean, uh, Hero rather, maybe do something a bit risky, a bit cheesy. And the reason for this is, if you really look at the way that Royal plays, he brings these, like, look, look, he's going to do it again. He brings unbelievably sharp, well-tuned, builds to just abuse normal zerg play that's like yeah. most of his terran versus zergs are like that last like do you remember when he made like with 10 scvs he made a factory and killed hero with like it was on dark origin like a couple seasons ago i think it was the season he won where it was like he just he killed him with it was like a vulture and three marines or something it was like really really weird and look here he's got a proxy six barracks that's so yeah, fast. This is so early. Is, is how much of a thing is this artosis? I feel I don't I, like I don't get to cast this almost ever. Like when I saw him send the SCV out that early, I'm like, this almost looks more like when I try to proxy gate and steal a gas from a Terran. But that's not the matchup, and that's not the race. Yeah, yeah, it's really not a thing. Uh, and in fact, Hero goes nine pool, and this is exactly the type of thing I wanted to see from Hero, because Royal like you'd never catch him playing a big macro. SK Terran game. Like, it's always something a little bit weird that he's throwing, you know, he's throwing the wrench in there. And this is not a normal build. He's cut his economy really, really drastically. And just looking at these builds, Hero should be able to just win this game. I think this is going to be very fast. Yeah, I think you're right. It's about time that Zerg started just sort of blind countering at least the cheese itself. Not with their own cheese, but just to open up where this is going to negate any of the powerful effects mm. of the build order. The Royal's coming out with... It's actually been a theme for this um, ASL. I mean, let's look at what TY did to Jadong, you know? Yeah. It's like a very well-engineered build that is going to come in here and destroy mainline Zerg openings. Jadong hey. suffers and <laughs> dies from it, but here, Hero is just ready to come out just as if he knew 100% the player was going to do that. And it's exactly what Royal's doing. So now Royal has these Marines in the middle of the map. Um, drones are mining gas already. Uh, obviously, a layer is more likely to be taken first, but you could go for Ling's speed. That could just spiral the game out of control. It, it is possible. Now, 
looking at this, uh, okay, he's going to pull some SCVs. He's got enough Marines that he can kind of fight against this right now. What he was hoping was that Hero would undermake Zerglings, but Hero made six. So, well, he loses one. Another has high damage. Bunker getting started. Like, the, uh, Royal's doing a good job with the build. You know, just now, oh my God. Uh, Hero knows what's going on. There's a counterattack going down. He might just oh. throw a sunk up in his main. Yeah, that's what's happening. A counterattack with a sunken. There's no units in the main base. He should be able to break through here. Yeah. Um, the Overlord being killed off means he can't hatch more Zerglings for the time being. The Lings are fully blocked. The SCV is going to be picked off. He's going to go right for that depot. But keep in mind, Terran's still mining back at home. This sunken colony about halfway finished. The Marines SCVs are going to come up here now. The drones haven't been pulled. The sunk finishes. He can't rotate to the other side. The other sunken colony is too safe. The Lings are now going to try to tear down this depot when they get in. Oh, man. I think this game is pretty much heroes, right? Like, he's... He's killing so. so much. He's going to be able to get some SCVs. He killed that depot, so we have a big supply block. Going to hurt the economy even more. A bunch of SCVs were sent. I guess one thing to say is it's one hatch for Hero, and he doesn't have that many drones because he had to make two sunken colonies. Yeah, he ha he is in a one hatch layer position. Maybe he could try to go for lurkers or something like that. The I SCVs are going to come back. I'm not clear on who has more workers. I see four, no, five, six, plus seven... Eight and I think nine SCVs total. Nine or ten. Yeah. Um, everything else is just Marines. Well, the Zerg, I think it was on a little bit less drones. Uh, it looks like Hero is just going to play Zerg for Zerg here and go one hatch Muta, and uh, that's actually <laughs> that is scary in this situation. This is actually what you're scared yeah, of. Is something like Hygelisks or Lurkers? You're like, well, maybe I can get a bunker up in like a turret or something. But here, it's like, okay, well. You need to make missile turrets and know what they're doing. And, you know, it, it's it's tricky. I don't know how this game is going to turn out. You know, normally I feel like after an opening where there's a bunch of damage, I can figure it out pretty easily. Here, though, I'm like, wait a minute. I I still think that Hero's probably good. He The thing is, he has to break the bunker and expand as well. Or he needs to just go all in and be like, okay, well, he's going to have enough gas for like six five six mutas and then he has a second hatch so maybe he masses up some lings with that as well and just tries to go across the map and and kill royal you know the bunker makes it a lot more complicated because the bunker just can't be easily killed by any small number of units um had the bunker not been made i think it would have been easy for zerg to just expand and this would have been a better game this game right now looks like my games of playing Zerg, like the first month online, where I didn't understand, like I yeah. have to take a expansion in every game. Like everybody had to learn that, where it's like, really, you make your second hatchery just right there at the expansion. <laughs> um, I, I think this is still scarier than uh, one might expect from mm. the Terrence perspective. Yeah, it is still a lot of mutas coming out. Um, you have enough gas stacked that, that this will almost feel like it's. Uh, you know, and expand play Muta for a little bit as they increment out. But he does have to figure out the bunker. And I think really Royal's uh, job right now is pretty easy. He just has to stay back and not die. Yeah, but that will be a little bit tough. You don't have much economy. There's not that many SCVs in here. He needs to build multiple turrets. The Mutalist count is actually going to get to seven. And seven is where you're one-shotting yeah. SCVs. So, like, that's, that's where damage can actually really start to pile up. And then you just can't afford turrets and... And, and it's going to snowball at that point. Just spiral out of control. Yeah. Both sides kind of limped into the um, the mid-game tech here, barely having enough workers. So, like, everything that's picked off is huge. And Zerg should really not be losing much of anything. It's pretty easy to keep all the Mutalisks alive, whereas Terran, it's much easier to have something get broken off uh, from your core unit group, whether it's an SCV or a Marine or even a Medic that just gets out of position. Some pretty good turret placement so far here from, from Royal. A couple more mutas coming up right now. Uh, you know, he has those extra larvae, so I think he's probably massing up a few lings to help take down that bunker as well. Because he does need to think about an expansion. If he Look at that muta count, man. That's that's like, it's getting kind of scary for how little his opponent has. Like, it, as Royal here, I would definitely feel like I'm going to lose. Yeah, I feel like this is still pretty winning here. Mm -hmm. uh, Hero's going to send up uh, a drone and take an expansion and look royal's not gonna die but he's not gonna get another base up 
anytime soon here. I I'm actually curious, Artosis, would you make a third barracks or do you save up for a command center here? I think you actually have to go tech. Like, you're not going to be able to deal with the really? Nihilists without, like, maybe a Valkyrie or even a science vessel. Like, just Yeah, you could go, like, super out. old school, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one base science vessel, a bunch of Marines and medics. It's just the, the Mutas kind of outscale you. You're not, you know, it, it, if you're playing against this many Mutalisks, you need so many Marines, and you can't really support that on these bases. And if you go, like, pure Marines, and your opponent just makes sunken colonies, it's like, well, what are you going to do now? It's two base against one. Oh, my God. And Royal just loses here in the... Yeah. The, yeah. A tough game. Probably should not have pushed out there. I think he felt the pressure of that second base and decided to try to force fight. And Hero said, all right, I'll take that. And so now we're going to have uh, Hero going up against Barracks. I tell you, Hero man, looking so scary, by the way. Yeah. Uh, a great build order choice from Hero. I think that this is important against Royal. And I do think that Royal's win rate is going to be falling overall because people have really figured out how he plays you can really see that from hero he's like okay will nine pool don't even need the gas just something kind of safe so he can't catch me off guard and uh now royal drops down to that loser match against many of all people he'll have to bring in some more standard play because once you start to have a certain style everybody just starts to hard counter it and that's yeah. exactly what we saw uh, what we saw here i really enjoyed the game though it was a lot of fun, and you can see Hero has some really good game sense to know to just run around, throw down the sunks, give up on the second hatchery, go in a lair, uh, and take the game from there. Very cool. Well, uh, I, I don't know that we really need to see a replay. <laughs> it's like, yes, and <laughs> well, then the Mutas I almost feel like we Marines. should be replaying this. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, so what happened? I mean, you know, we were talking about it, but are, was it Mutas just gunning down all the Marines as they tried to fire up this ramp? Yeah. This doesn't look that different from a normal game, but until you glance at the naturals and realize they aren't there. <laughs> they should have highlighted the Lings running around the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the Marines and killing the, the depot because that was really the play that actually won it, and then yep. the Sunks covering the, the one hatchery. Anyways, um, guys, we're going to be going to a break here. Coming up next, it is best of three time. Barracks versus Hero to get that third spot in the round of eight in the ASL. <웃음> 팬들의 사랑을 먹고 사는 프로게이머로서 많은 사람에게 기억에 남는 게더 그렇죠. 이게 ASL이 뭐 끝나고 뭐 그러면 이제 우승을 한게더 이제 값진다고 생각하는데 계속 열리는 동안은 일단 주선을 계속 하는 게더 생각을 해요. 어, 두 선수 모두 의견이 좀 팽배한데 다른 관점에서 이야기를 좀해 보자면 우리가 지금 17번째 시즌이잖아요. 근데 모든 시즌 준우승을 한다는 거는 사실 결국에는 프로게이머에서 우승을 못 한다는 거잖아요. 시즌이 끝날 때까지. 괜찮겠어요? 근데 모든 걸 바라봐도 상금만 바라봐도 준우승을 계속해도 계속 계속 아 돈도 많이 벌고 더 아 기억에 계속 남는 선수가 솔직히 아 뭐 홍준호 선수 같은 유명한 선수들 있잖아요. 준우승을 많이 하더라도 더 많이 하면 더 기억에 남을 거예요. 상금으로 이야기하니까 뭔가 갑자기 확, 확 와닿는데 상윤철 선수 이 부분에 대해서 어떻게 생각하세요? 저건 맞긴 한데요. 네. 나중에 ASL이 끝났을 때 이제 우승자 이름에 없으면 은 아쉽다는 느낌이 들것 같아요. 아 언젠가 끝나는 날에 뭐 명예의 정당 같은 게 생길 아수 있잖아요. 그쵸, 그쵸. 준우승에만 박혀 있으면 은 아 뭔가 좀 아쉽지 않나. 역사로만 그 이야기를 들었을 때 우승자로서 기억되고 싶다. 그렇죠. 뭔가 좀... 신공을 올렸어요 지금 뭔가 <웃음> 오. 감정에 너무 움직이는 거 같아요 <웃음> 저 예쁘거든요 <웃음> 어, 역사에 결국 이름을 올리는 건 우승자다 
결국은 준우승을 엄청 많이 하면 그 사람을 더 쳐줘요 사람들은 근데 이제 우승 한번 하고 계속 떨어지면 어. 잊혀지는 사람이 돼요 어. 잊혀지는 선수가 되면서 명예전당에 이름만 올라가면 음. 큰 의미가 없다고 생각해야죠 준우승을 여러 번 하는 거그 자체가 역사다 이미 그렇죠. 많이 하면 많이 할수록 사람들이 와저 사람 또 준우승 할까? 하는 기대감이 있어요 이번에도 준우승 할까? 하고 결승전에 이제 막 시청자 커지는 거야 네, 이번엔 우승 하, 할까? 하는 이번에는 기대가 이번에는 하나 네. 어, 뭔가 되게 현실적이면서도 확 와닿는 의견이네요 저 이쪽에 조금 더 마음이 갔어요 지금 변현재 선수가 6대 4거든요 마지막 최후의 결론 기회를 드리겠습니다 네, 저도 결혼했잖아요 현실적으로 생각해보니까 현재 의견이 맞아요 <웃음> 왜냐면은 이게 17시즌이면 은 네. 우승을 하면 1억 7천이거든요 <웃음> 삼촌보다는 저쪽에서 나은 것 같기도 하고 <웃음> 현실적으로 이제 아기를 아 키워야 되기 때문에 아 그러면 장윤철 선수가 변현재 선수에게 설득당한 걸로 어, 저는 저쪽이 좋을 것 같아요 아, 알겠습니다 자 그러면 이번 토론회의 승자는 모든 시즌 준우승을 택한 변현재 선수에게 <웃음> 어, 다 오는 거예요? 네 드리도록 하겠습니다 축하드립니다 <웃음> 불좀 켜줄래? 내 의자 좀 보게 오늘 내 기분 컬러로 말할게 이 의자 내 아름다움이 다 담아질까? 하루만 네 의자에 메쉬가 되고 싶어 알고 싶어 너의 특별 할인값 만들어봐 네 의자에 꿀자세 What up, everybody? We're back, and what a hell of a day it's been so far. Two just incredible, very unique, very special games that mm -hmm. can remind anybody new to StarCraft or been watching since the very beginning, um, sometimes you get these games that are almost impossible to recreate. For sure. There's no game has the diversity level of StarCraft 1, man. Like, those are a yeah. couple of unicorn games that we just saw. Totally awesome. And to watch these players have the flexibility to think so far out the box and play games they've never played before like that. Like, how do you even practice for that stuff, man? That game Mini pulled out, holy crap. I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'll leave that to the viewers to decide if that's a good or bad thing. That one of the things I'll be thinking about in my deathbed is Mini almost forcing that into a draw, <laughs> but it's just what it is, man. <laughs> um, up next, man, we've got... <laughs> Barracks versus Hero. Now, look, I think Barracks played very well versus Mini. He did kind of get the right build off versus the wrong build to deal with it. Yeah. Um, and he put up a good fight. He beat Mini. A win is a win. I think Hero is a much tougher opponent. If, if Barracks doesn't get into another kind of early game situation where he's just killing drones and taking stuff out, we already kind of saw what happens when, Hero, when people try that against Hero uh, with his last game versus Royal. I just think it's going to be a tough one here. I think this should be a 2-0 for Hero where he gets out and we move on with the rest of the group. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Radeon, Dark Origin, Blixy. You know, there's some there's some potential here for Barracks if he brings strong builds. Okay, Barracks here in the top right, in the red, and in the bottom left, in the blue, is Hero. As a reminder, guys, if you've been enjoying the games uh, like Artosis and I are, and you want to support our cause to keep the history of the greatest esport, the original esport, alive in the English language, consider supporting our Patreon. It's patreon.com ASL English. Consider signing up for a year. Five bucks a month goes a long way to help us um, you know, continue to do what we love to do. 
Yeah, we love you guys. Thank you so much for everyone who has been supporting, uh, you know, since Afrika TV canceled that English broadcast. Just so happy to still be doing this. And, like, the games just keep getting better as well. I feel like this yeah. season is actually, it feels like it's really delivering, in my opinion. I, I know that I'm kind of like, there's some recency bias because of today and, and the wonderful games that we've had. But, yeah, I'm I'm loving it. A really diverse set of players and everything as well. So, uh, you know, it's it's been great. Now, looking looking here, Tasteless, right? Radeon is a pretty big map. A lot of Terrans feel this is a kind of a hard one. Uh, you know, Terran versus Zerg here, you know, cross spawn. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what, what the plan is going to be from Barracks. Does he just play like a standard game? Is he going to do anything technical? It's cross spawn, so it doesn't feel like he's going to have any great like timings or anything like that. He might have to play, you know, kind of a straight up macro-esque style and grind hero out. It feels like that. I don't think Barracks, you know, the way that he played game one of the day here versus Mini, I know it was a, a drop, a one-base drop, which is considered pretty cheesy. It's pretty common on Apocalypse. That's a pretty big main. Mm. Uh, that's why it's a little bit worrisome that Mini even went into, like, that super fast shuttle reaver just because that is, like, a common thing people do on that map. Um, but, look, you know, Barracks played a very straight-up macro game here. I would imagine he could probably try to do the same thing here as well. The thing about Hero is he seems to make the matchup really easy for himself. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he, it's it's almost... <laughs> it's like the opposite of Soma, where Soma has some, some of the most death-defying, crazy moves. Mm. Uh, where, you know... Or, or like Jadong in the past, where it's like they get in and they pull something off that's crazy. Like, Hero is almost able to just kind of avoid all the difficult parts of the matchup <laughs> and stay ahead and win, you know? Yeah, he, he's closer to a Sulky than... You know, and yes. an, an effort or a Jadong or a Soma. You know, there's some Zergs that are pretty aggressive and and rely on being ultra decisive to win their games on thin margins. Whereas Hero and you know, and it, the thing is, they all can do everything. But like Hero and Sulky, I think are two that you look at in Larva back when he was active, where it's like, oh, you know, we're gonna kind of do our own thing and like make sure you can't kill us and. You know, eventually there's defilers and, <laughs> you know, there's there's all sorts of Zerg tools that can be utilized like that. And uh, it does feel like that's oftentimes what Hero does. He's very, very strong, uh, you know, tactically, strategically, macro-wise. And he actually slips the drone in. This is crazy. Yeah, that is crazy because he gets up here and he sees there's no second racks. He sees there's a fast gas. So that's like, that's a lot of intel, man. Looking at that, this, you're already this having, uh, you have it down to either uh, a fast factory here or more likely a fast engineering bay. Yeah, I think that eBay is going to be th thrown up over here. Um, yeah, you almost never see in a pro match a drone solid snake by a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Marines get inside the base and just see what Terran's doing. Normally, Terran and Cross Spawn can take a great amount of comfort in knowing that the Overlords are never going to get into the top right corner position and see that gas, uh, eBay or Academy. Now, I, we didn't see the eBay or Academy, but just seeing the gas alone means you know there's less Marines that are going to be uh, active on the map. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is a, a Hydroden. Did I yeah. just, just see that correctly? That's right. That's right. A Ooh. Hydroden. So uh, there's two possibilities here. You actually can go Hydras against this. Because they're sitting, you know, right now, Barracks is sitting behind a wall. He doesn't have any good way to scout. The scanners are always going to be a little bit later with this build uh, than with other builds. Uh, and you're just going to be very low on Marine counts, right? Uh, there's also the possibility of, of course, just a Lurker type of bust or any sort of Lurker play. Because you're, you're always going, like, four Barracks after this. So if you're just, like, starting your four Barracks Marine production and there's already a bunch of Lurkers outside your base... That's not going to be very comfortable. Uh, but this, like, he's making Hydras already. He barely has drones at his natural. So this is going to be highly aggressive from Hero. I like it. I think this is really smart. The four Hydras are going to move across the map. It's Lings behind this. So it'll be four Lurkers with all these Lings. And there's a real possibility that Terran just dies. Now, this is happening because he scouted the gas. Or was this... Just a yes. premeditated build order that the hero was going to do. If you do this against two racks yeah. academy rush, you're 
you're so far behind. Like, your opponent is going to be loving that. Now, he scans, he sees that, he has to start building bunkers. He needs to start a second bunker as well. This is going to be a Ling Lurker all-in, is what it looks like. There is a second gas. You have to save uh, your second scan uh, for detection Where purposes. Is... Hmm? Where is his second bunker? This is insane. He, he only his... has yeah. one? Yeah, that's that's wild. That's completely wild that this he has is... to start a second bunker. It's stressing me out. Yeah, me too. Eight. You can make a second and even a third if you want behind that. I mean, all you got to do is not die to this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he's going macro lurker and you build three bunker, maybe you're like, uh, but you you need to be able to hold on against this. Look at this. He goes up. He burrows already some great volleys from these lurkers. He can get around that bunker. Oh, my God. He's actually just diving towards the main base here. Dude, Barracks looks dead. Yeah, I don't think this is going to last much longer. There's just not enough Marines at this point in time. More Lurkers than there are Marines literally uh, in the game. All he has to do is get one or two Lurkers up on top of those barracks. This game should be over. And I got to say, you know, when you scan, you see Ling's hatching. You see the Hydra Den with the Leia right next to it. Those three uh, events that are happening are all you need to know about what's coming. The <laughs> fact that we didn't have a second or even a third bunker made is crazy to me. It's shocking. It's completely shocking. I don't I don't get it. Cut some marine production. Just get bunkers down. In fact, it's really smart to go two bunkers at your natural and one up your ramp. But here yeah. here is the truth of the matter, okay? Barracks is not quite as good as these other players. He is fantastic. Yeah. He's so strong. He's in ASL just about every season. But he's not known for being a really smart player. Okay, and this is not some sort of like slight, but he's not someone that Artosis will... is attacking his intelligence. Yeah, I'm everybody. attacking his intelligence. You saw it here. But his style is one of he's a fast player, he's a macro player. Most of the time he gets his builds from other players and utilizes them, but like he, you know, he didn't think on his feet there. Like if you have a player that thinks on their feet quickly, I guarantee you Light would have had a bunker up the ramp, he would have had two at the natural, and he would have just smacked that. Uh, so this was, I think this was a good play from Hero also. Uh, just to mention, you know, he had those two Marines out front and Hero ran around it. Very smart play from Hero to be able to set up that all in. Yeah. You know, it could be a nerves thing too. I think cognitively he probably knows I'm not supposed to be making more SCVs right now, but sometimes when there's this much adrenaline going, you're kind of autopiloting your, your keyboard inputs here. But yeah, you need to pump the brakes, throw down the bunkers and stop that all in. Anyways, this is the best of three, so there's still a shot here for Barracks, but he has to win this game on Neo Dark Origin and the next. Okay, we've got Barracks here in the bottom right. And Hero in the top left. Neo Dark Origin is a map where uh, it seems to follow a, a set of very specific rules about, you know, controlling the center, trying to cross the three bridges on their side or the other side, limited options as far as expansions go as the game gets further along. Mm -hmm. um, although I feel like those rules are maybe a little bit less strict in TVZ. Would you agree with that, Artosis? Yeah. Yeah, there, there's Terran versus Zerg is like a pretty mobile matchup, I guess, in a lot of ways. Yeah. So like containments can happen, but if like, for instance, a winning containment from Zerg is that that strategy that we've been seeing a lot lately, where you might go like heavy muta into lurkers in front of the main base, right? So like if your opponent went double starport and you put five lurkers in front of their base, you basically that's that's the containment strategy. And as far as Terran, it's like the containment is putting bio outside your opponent's base and like kiting backwards as they attack out so it's not it's not like the other matchups i feel like all the other matchups you get more solid contains whereas here everything everything just kind of moves around really quickly so it's not as big a deal got the barracks coming down here now for this fast expand setup um hero i think he's just gonna go for hatch first is that correct not playing no? the same kind of... Oh, no, I'm sorry. He went for pool first. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an overpool. And, um, uh, you know, overpool, I think it makes sense on a map like this. You might expect, like, an eight barracks or something. Overpool is pretty popular yeah. right now against Terran just because of uh, how many eight raxes came out. Like, eight raxes is actually falling off a little bit because Zergs have done enough of the pool first. 
it's such an interesting way that the meta works, right? Like you get a build that's doing very well and then the counter build comes out and once the counter build does well enough to bring the win rate of the other build, the good build, down enough, that build starts to disappear and then that'll bring down the win rate of the counter build and then that goes away and then, you know, eventually you'll get back to it as well. Yeah, these builds kind of pop in and out of style. That's why you got to be really on top of what everybody's doing. I love the eBay block, by the way. The distance there just barely blocks where the bottom left part of the hat tree would be. <laughs> yeah. It's a great trick that you can use as Terran because then eBay is so big. Uh, the, the moment you plant it down, it takes the full size of the actual engineering bay itself. So you're able to block at distance. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can run the SCV off uh, as the drone <laughs> attacks the eBay, run the SCV, skate it right back on, almost like it's uh, a little inline skater doing a trick and pull it back <laughs> off again just to get a little bit more HP on there. Yeah, yeah. I like that, like a little inline skater doing a little trick. Little guy yeah. performing little his best. Little skateboard <laughs> grinds down the eBay and then pops back. He ollies off and goes home. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's that's a pretty solid opening from Barracks. You know, he catches uh, an overpool and, and blocks the hatch momentarily, has a wall in, so he's really not afraid at all. Uh, and he'll go to Rax Academy. So he kind of learned his lesson that previous game. This is a very fast layer from Hero. Uh... But, you know, his his second hatchery is a bit late, so definitely Barracks with a better opener overall. We're going to have Barracks in a game where he's probably going to have more opportunities he could create. We've got the layer coming along here for Hero. I don't think we're going to see him do another hide, uh, Lurker bust here. You really need to be conservative with how often you use those. Mm -hmm. uh, you never want to be known as the guy that does the Ling Lurker all in all the time because it's, you know... It's one of those things where if you know it's coming, then you need to get the bunkers and stop it. And once it's done, they don't have any drones and you have more than enough SCVs. It's a cakewalk from there. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, no one's known for that because it's so bad. Like you just right. you lose you lose with it more than you win with it. it it's a good mix and build occasionally. Uh, but that's that's the extent of it. you got to be like a god macro zerg like hero to make a build like that really work because your opponent just does not expect such a thing. Uh, but here, you know, like, Barracks is playing that more safe build. If he had done something like this, Hero never would have done that because this would just very, very likely kill it. Uh, now he's building right. a lot of Marines, getting that Academy up. He'll get his Stim and everything, get some comm stats, figure out what's going on. But it's pretty standard from Hero. Nothing, nothing really looks too out of place. So um, the eBay... A little bit later than the previous eBay in the other game. Scanners are going to come down here. He'll have a scan ready to basically confirm that mutas are coming and then be ready to uh, tur it up just in the nick of time. Well, uh, yeah, the Spire is finishing up here in five minutes, so going to start those mutalisks as well. Looks like Barracks is going to go into three Barracks play, uh, and that that's just kind of the middle of the road uh, type of style. So this is the most vanilla game that we've seen today by miles right this is everything yeah. here looks super standard from barracks i think he really did get rattled a little bit in that that previous game against hero so he's just going to defend he's going to macro but if you go into a game like this like hero really excels at games like this he's kind of like sulky in that regard where if you're going to yeah. play a standard game he knows the ins and outs of that so well yeah, he's very comfortable just playing, uh, you know, a, a game like that. I think maybe not quite as good as Sulky at, like, catching uh, units in the middle of the map, but he's still pretty crafty. He's good at setting up tactics. What do you think of the placement of that barracks that the uh, uh, Mutalisks are hitting right now? Uh, yeah, he just he didn't want to fly it too far away, and this turret is kind of half covering it, and then you got the bunker on the left. As range finishes and he gets another turret, I think it's fine. It's like, it's not the greatest position, but he didn't have to fly it far. And, you know, it would have kind of a wonky spot up in the main base. It wouldn't really be covered by the other turrets because he has his eBay there. Okay, he's hitting these turrets down here. Luckily, there should be enough behind this that he can't press through any further. But, you know, the way these minerals are shaped, it's kind of a nightmare for Terran because the mutas can easily come in from all these different angles and hit him. And those glaives, of course, chain together and connect, so the damage really starts to stack. What looks like a few hits on one or two SCVs suddenly spreads to many more. Um, he, Barracks tries to come out on the map. This is more to force the mutas to engage with the Marines so that mm -hmm. the SCVs have breathing room and he can try to 
um, reconstruct the defenses he had down there before. But the moment they back up, the Minas go right back into this position over here. Yeah, I don't know that this is a great move out time from Barracks. Uh, like, definitely he's trying to do exactly as you said and, and buy himself some time, but that's a very small army. Maybe if uh, Hero happened to be droning right now, this would this would be a stronger move. But as is, like, I feel like it, Hero's microing very well on the bridges. He's reducing this count a lot. Where are the medics? The medics are behind because that's what medics do. Uh, so he loses every Marine there. <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah. that's a little bit brutal. Like, even with the medics, you're going to lose your Marines there. But, like, that wasn't, that's not that good a play. Like, I don't feel like he's actually identified what Hero's doing. Once you, like, if you scan and you see they're still popping mutas and the drone count isn't absurd in the natural, and it's not, it's like two drones mining minerals, you stay in your base because otherwise this happens. Right. Yeah, and it also it just kind of clunky controls there. The medic's not with the Marines, and uh, Hero was smart enough to not just uh, stop looking for the medics, but instead to go find them, kill them off, go right back to it. And now the Marine number is small enough that it seems the Mutas can both hammer these turrets, killing them off, and then force the Marines forward, kill them off. And this actually could just be a game yep. where the Mutas win right here. In fact, I think it could even, yeah, okay, there it is. Beat me to it. I was going to say it could go right on top of the two turrets on the barracks and just end the game. Hero making this look like a mismatched uh, ladder pairing. Yeah, he really it's he like, did. You know, it's like, you know, it's B rank versus S rank over here. Just completely murdered this Terran. And um, obviously, Barracks' story is not over. He'll be in the final match of the evening, but Hero moves on. Easy peasily. Yeah, it, it, I think he really showed well the skill gap that exists between like a top four ASL player and a round of 24 slash sometimes round of 16 player. Uh, it, unbelievable skill gap, right? Like that was that was crazy. He just walked his way through this group. None of his games were close. 3-0 uh, and right into the round of eight. It did seem like uh, maybe a little bit jittery moving this far out and not completely turning back. So let's look at the Marines and then the Medics. It seems like they were bound on different hotkeys and weren't moving in unison. He came and hit that one, and then we see the Marines come down, but there are no other Medics. Actually, it's this main group up here. He tries to basically get this arc, and sometimes you can get the Medics to just follow the Marines because they'll be healing stimmed Marines behind them. Yeah. There's almost like a technique Terran have to have that I don't even know how to explain it. I know I've done it just barely a little bit when I've dabbled with Terran, where you get the medics to kind of trail onto them. You kind of have to know how many of them are still missing HP and will they stick together. But if they fully heal and you A-move and you don't have them stimmed again, the medics will just sit there. Yeah, uh, it was a rough one. Uh, let's go over to the interview and uh, see what Hero's thinking about that easy journey. You're watching Group B of the round of 16 of ASL Season 17 as we have our first place finisher moving on to the round of 8. Let's talk to Hero, the Zerg. Congratulations. Thank you. Tremendously light control and nimbleness coming from you today as you come out victorious ever so quickly, advancing through to the quarterfinals. This is your 10th time making it into the round of 8. Hero is making quite the record here. Looking oh, forward to seeing you go even further. Let's hear how you're feeling first. Though. As you've probably picked up from previous interviews, I am not as hungry for victory this season, to be perfectly honest. And so I practiced less, I cut down on my practice, I theorized a bit more, um, came up with some builds. Still, things fell into place, I suppose. If we take a look at what you brought to the table today, uh, you had a more tactical approach rather than a macro-based one. You went for a pull first against Royal. Uh, what made you decide to change your approach like this? Uh, honestly, the pull first? You know, I thought that Royal would try something this time. Oh, he's so detestable. You don't know what it is? But he's definitely up to something. So I practiced pull first in my prep, and uh, my practice partner said it was good. I gained confidence, and uh, I managed to get it done. In the same vein, in the winner's match against Barracks, first map, you went for a hatchery, then you scouted, and then went for a hydra den. Were you convinced it will work? Uh, I didn't really know what Barracks wanted to do. Judging by the gas timing, it did not feel like an eBay first, more like Valkyries. 
Uh, I thought, so I went into Lurkers, but it did end up being eBay first. I don't know if he was improvising or what. Still, um, I played Lurkers after not having done so in a while, uh, so I guess he must have just got confused and it worked. Well, with what you showed afterwards, same goes for your Muta control. Expectations are indeed very high for you this season. Uh, your colleagues showed up in droves um, here at the studio today. I wonder if that's what gave you a boost. Yeah, a lot of our students from the StarCraft University team showed up today. Uh, it definitely gave me strength. Um, they brought me drinks and snacks. So, um, I was able to focus better, it seems. You are such a reliable player in the ASL, always getting to the round of eight, always getting to the round of four. So much so, there's a saying that if you want to win the ASL, you have to go through Hero. It's a cool title to have, but it could also be a thorn in your side. You must have that championship in the crosshairs. What can we expect to see from you uh, in future? To start, uh, I did not think I would be able to advance as easily as I did today. There are a bunch of heavy hitters in this group. I was worried sick, um, so uh, it's helped me boost my confidence. I expect to be able to show that confidence in the round of eight a little better. And anything to say to the fans cheering you on? Uh, thank you to my fans for supporting me today. Now recently, people have been saying online that my form has dropped. Uh, I too want to do. Uh, I too want to work hard, but whenever I do, um, the games just don't go well. That's a bit of a dilemma. Um, anyway, I'll focus on my mental and physical condition. Please keep cheering uh, for me this season. There's a whole host of people who help me practice. There's uh, YSC, Snow, uh, Rush, Mind, Sark, and Ample. Uh, thank you, guys. Also, thank you to my colleagues cheering me on here at the studio and online as well. Um, big thanks to JSA. Once again, congratulations on the win and on advancing through to the quarterfinals. See you in the round of eight. Thank you. And that does it for our interview with the first person to advance out of today's group in Hero. Let's now take a look at the special events we have prepared for our fans. You can participate in a match prediction event on the Africa TV website with a power bank up for grabs for two people who correctly predict the quarter finalists. Additionally, uh, we have a special deal on well, uh, well Live gaming chairs uh, purchased for 40% off through the mobile app or the online chat. The promotion lasts until the end of ASL 17. And as we wonder who our second player to move on today will be, he will return with a losers match between Mini and Royal in just a few. Today, 메쉬가 되고 싶어. 알고 싶어. 너의 특별 할인값. 만들어 봐. 네 의자에 꿀자세. 꿀자세.
Finally told my body, I wanna get away from this. I'm trying to find myself in this difficult world. Try to drive back to Dumbo, so I want to I gotta be motivated, gotta be loved. I need a trip, that's what I'm thinking about. But I need my space, my life, and I'm fading now. I really think it's my time. I've been waiting And we're back. It is time to go into a PVT, a very unusual losers match here. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, no disrespect to to Royal. I think there's no shame in losing to Hero. But man, Mini is down here, and he could get eliminated. Royal's very good. Yeah, let's see what uh, Royal has planned. Like, I think he probably has uh, a, a good, solid plan ready here to play against Mini. Right? Like, you have to think that you're probably going to have to play Mini to get out of the group. So, you know, I, I, Royal, I'm, I'm thinking about his Terran versus Protoss overall. I feel like Mini should be able to win this Tasteless. Like, Royal is a little bit fanciful. He, he likes that upgrade Terran style. It kind of went out of style. Is he going to be able to adjust to the five-fact meta correctly against one of the best Protosses in the world? That is the question. Um, we're going to start this off on Neo Dark Origin. Possibility of a gas steal uh, and or a proxy here. Let's find out what happens as the loser of this best of three is out of the ASL. Okay, we've got Royal here in the bottom and Mini on the top. So, uh, mm, y y like, obviously, I think we're going to see a gas deal. We'll see if he goes proxy. Yeah, it does look like he's going to proxy gate the fifth probe sent out across the map here. Uh, so, yeah, Mini going to get very highly aggressive. And, you know, any map where there's two spawns, and a place you can put a proxy gate. It's kind of hard to not go for this. It's just a really good cheese rush. It's a really good way to control the Terran uh, in the game. Now, there's ones where you just steal the gas and ones where you take a pylon right over here. And it looks like he's going to be making the pylon. I guess he wouldn't have sent the probe any earlier, uh, or this early if you were gonna, going to make a pylon on your main. But yeah, he'll be making a gate down here and probably running in and stealing the gas. Now, it is possible for Terran to prevent the gas. We see players like Sharp basically play games to always stop that. Yeah. Uh, conversely, we've had games from Flash where he always lets them take the gas and tries to play the game from there. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be uh, fun to see how Royal approaches this because he's a pretty brainy Terran. He puts a lot of thought in early game play. He does have the um, minerals to take that refinery if he wants, but the barracks will be late. This is kind of the, the dangers, the perils... Uh, of of dealing with this proxy, yeah, and that that's an eight gate, right? That was super super fast. So he's actually gonna have the first sellout out before that first marine, and Royal does grab his own gas. We're gonna have some offensive pylons. This game, if like because he took the gas, I think Royal has to make a bunker if he wants to not take significant damage here. I don't think that even the best micro in the world is going to maybe do enough here for you based on what we're seeing from Royal. Like he's losing all this mining time. Uh, you know, his Sim City is not super fantastic in my opinion. Like maybe puts a deep on the bottom there, but there's gonna be harassment up at the top. Shield batteries could be added. Yeah, this is a different kind of rush than what I'm used to seeing. I'm so, I'm so used to like gate on nine and gas deal, but yeah, this is like manor pylons thrown down here. The, 
The Zealot's going to come very fast. The battery there as a form of a pylon uh, block or, or, you know, worker block in there. This is wild. Well, this is this is going to be just a terrible situation. He, he man, I, I, I don't know. He, like, just make the bunker here. He's going to end up losing so much with the shield batteries repairing and everything. He's got to kill these pylons off. You can see, look at that. Just so hard to micro. He's trying to bring out these SCDs block. And this is great micro here from Royal so far. But the Zots are going to keep flowing in. Yeah, and of course, there's nothing that can really heal these Marines or repair these SCVs. The SCVs don't have time to try to fix each other uh, in a situation like this one. So a lot of workers are getting dropped. You know, any sustain the Zealots have from those batteries is massive. You can see the Zealot that's almost close to being killed is going to stay alive. The battery a couple seconds out and as a third oh, Zealot comes in here from below. The flank of the third Zealot is so strong while he pulls those Zealots back. Really good execution so far here from Mini. The shield battery about to finish. He's going to go back, heal up that Zealot really quickly. And, you know, we're getting up to the Marine count where maybe you end up holding on, but look at the difference in supply here. It, definitely Mini has a big edge at the moment. He does. It, it's fascinating to see what the, you know, extra space the battery gives you you know how much more time you have to, to last in this the zealots are going to collapse on this this could actually be gg here yeah, yeah. i mean three zealots still alive one marine out and we know a fourth zealot is inbound there it is gg artosis you were 100 percent correct a bunker had to be made there royal maybe a little bit too greedy and um it, you know it's, yeah. it's hard when you're when you're so good at starcraft you learn how to hold things perfectly so that you can use the rest of your resources to get ahead after that. But what happens sometimes with the very best players in the world is they're too greedy in a moment where all they had to do was stop the initial attack. And that's what happened. You can see him shaking his head. Mm -hmm. He hears Artosis' his voice in the back of his mind talking about a bunker, uh, and he didn't make it. I tell you, it, you have to on these two-player maps, if the probe is in your base that early, you do have to check. Because if it's something like an 8 gate, you just, you either have to go for the second barracks, or if you went gas, you have to go for the bunker. If it's a later gate, okay, maybe you can get away with this, but just, I don't know. I, I, I watch these guys make these choices, and it's like, you need to work on your decision tree in the early game. Uh, so that's a quick, easy win for Mini. We're gonna go on a retro. A tough map for Terran versus Protoss. No doubt. Uh, retro is where it's going to be here. Four-player maps. We cannot recreate that situation we just saw there in game one. But fingers crossed we get a more dramatic, longer game here as this best of three continues on. Mini in the top right, Royal in the bottom left. Just thinking about that last game, by the way, Artosis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that that is the much less common proxy rush. Maybe you experience it on ladder, but I, I, I yeah. imagine you probably find that people take your gas more, right? And kind of put the pressure on with the zealots like that. Is that usually the case? Yeah, yeah. It generally, uh, it, you know. But if you're if you're making your gate that early, this is why I talk about a lot of the time where. People are like, oh, why don't you just take your gas? It's like, well, if you take your gas and it's a really early gate, a seven or an eight gate near you, you die like that. Artosis has ignored my Discord DM on how to get here. Sorry. Oh, my God. Tasteless. Is so I'm one of those guys. I'm the opposite of Tasteless. I have a 1,000 unread emails in my inbox, and, like, my Discord unread number is just always nines. It's just, like... Sorry, sorry, guy in the audience. So sorry, funny. I missed that. <laughs> well, it's also like you can you could also just Google how to get down there and not use Artosis as the tech support to find the That's studio funny. as That's well. Oh, These man. directions are Googleable, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry about what was that. I, gonna say? I, I am I am notoriously bad at at responding to people, but uh, eventually, I've, you know, it might be a year from now, but I'll eventually get back to you. I'm like, lol. Yeah, I remember that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> lol. Hope you had a good time in Korea. Um, Oh, that's so funny. I actually, um, I, by I, the way, Nexus first here for me. Yeah, I was actually snickering at the beginning because when I saw cross spawn, I actually already knew the future uh, because 100 <laughs> percent mini was going to go Nexus first here. Um, like the thing is, it's really good on retro regardless. Retro, if you can get your opponent to play a defensive game, 
they're really screwed at high levels on retro because you can't go into four base on this map. Um, you have to play a more aggressive game. And because it's cross spawn, this is going to be especially bad for Royal because you can't actually punish Nexus first cross spawn. This is a really strong opening here for Mini. We got to see which kind of Nexus first build it is. There's many different variations. Um, but this is a distance where you could probably do the greediest version of Nexus first. Main Nexus first builds are basically two gate early. Okay, so that's what this one's going to be. You can go for gate gas. You can also get a forge, depending, and kind of tech behind mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. They all have different strengths and weaknesses, and I think it's one of the big challenges for Terrence is to try to understand how to deal with each of them here. Because the double gate opening, as an example, pretty much rush-proof. And we know a yeah. lot of Terrans in the past have liked to just kind of rush into this. And this just allows you to take a fight that you're probably always going to win. Suddenly, this uh, macro game will just turn into the same fight we saw in game one where Terran loses again. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you try to attack into it. Yeah, it, like if it's cross spawn and it's two gate, it's just it. First off, you have to you have to do a box scout. Here he's doing end scout, so he won't even see it. He'll just expand before he can make the decision, right? So in some ways, that's made for him. So he's kind of lucky that Mini went two gate because if Mini goes one gate, like you could bust it cross spawn, but they can move their probes up the ramp and it just turns into a normal game. That's why, like when it's cross spawn Nexus first, you're never behind after the beginning. If you just if you have that solid understanding of when to run, what to do. Uh, but here, it's like, okay, uh, it's not unplayable for Royal, uh, you know, because it is that, that two-gate variety. The, you have to skip a few probes for that, right? So your your probe advantage is not as large as it would be if it was like the one gate. Oh, I'm surprised he got that in there. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it, dude, it's pretty hard to block that ramp with the one zealot. Sometimes it looks like you've got it perfectly, but I it's he just had a it. hex off. Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah. Hmm. This is a cool solution, by the way, for the Vulture coming up here. Uh, obviously, the Vulture beats the Zealot, but you can kind of, like, just buy time yeah. by staying back and play a little bit of a zoning game. If the Vulture overextends, the Zealot gets a few hits, and the Dragoon finishes it off. So uh, he's able to drive that back. He may even cancel those pylons. We'll see. That, that was an extremely smart move because, uh, you know, 11 gas... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, goes, it gets the Vulture quick enough that it's into your natural even cross spawn before the Dragoon. So really, really smart play from Mini there to block that off. Just loses a bit of Zot health. health. And you can see that he's actually cut a lot. He figured out what was going on. He's only made one Zot. He's made one Dragoon. There's no range. He's going into Robo. And he's just producing probes really consistently, which is how you actually end up getting ahead. Now, we have the Robo coming. This is all very standard. You have to get the Robo before Dragoon range because you need to get an Observer and figure out what's going on. I think some of the smartest Terrans in this matchup have gone for third command centers pretty quickly and used mines. Yeah. Um, but there are other ways to play the game. Now, Mini, whenever I see him Nexus first, I, my mind immediately rewinds back to uh, his finals against Rush where he went for, like, carrier rushes on Nexus first so many times it was crazy yeah and i do wonder if that could be the case here i know that this map in cross spawns it might not look like the best carrier map but i do think there's something to the fact that you have the edges of the map so isolated from the middle of the map carriers can be abused in that way yeah so I, I, yeah i mean let's see what he does it this time around I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, Snow is on record saying that cross-spawn Nexus first into Carrier is actually unbeatable. There's no real counter to it. It's just like, it, you're so far away from Terran, it's so hard for them to attack you, and by the time they can get across the map and actually, like, force an engagement, you have a bunch of Carriers out. So there's just, you can't really have enough Goliaths at that point. So I would not be surprised if he goes for that. And in fact, you see that pylon right there? That might be the Stargate pylon. <laughs> yeah, you never want to make those Stargates right by your normal stuff. You want to make the Terran spend a little bit more scans to confirm it's going to come. We've got the shuttle inbound over here. I'm sorry, did, wait, did that have the Reaver in it? Was the Reaver actually out? I don't think so, no. I think he's. this is like a scout no. or something, I'm pretty sure. Okay. You wouldn't, okay. You wouldn't have well, a Reaver right now. Well, I mean, you right can now. also do this. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I was going to say this. This is. There's no. It's not physically possible to have a Reaver yet, so... He's going to move out on the map, basically. 
and scout with this and see what's up. Sometimes you can cause a tear to panic, especially in live matches. Yeah, it's just a Zealot and a Dragoon. And you can hit this. Now, again, you don't have that much defending anymore. Is Royal going to have hey, enough coming up here? That looks it's pretty scary, actually, this push. Uh, the Dragoon's really out of position. So he's utilizing that wall against Mini now, that wall that defended the early harassment. He's sitting outside of it. And the Dragoons can't really come through single file. You actually kind of want Terran to kill a pylon here, but he's going to try it. The, the Vultures are actually slightly out of position. I feel like if they were up just a little bit, they could have blocked this easily. Uh, but yeah, he's wow. going to be able to pick off most of the tanks. Only one tank remains. Yeah, there's one. T as long as there's one tank, Terran still has some sustainability. The Reaver's going to be out, so he can just pick that up, swap it out for the Dragoon, and try to come in from whatever angle he can find. Oh my <laughs> god, great shot in between the... Uh, the Minerals there takes a shot over the turret. He can take one more shot right over here onto these Marines, and now there's not real uh, mobile anti-air anymore. One more shot on that turret, and it's going to fall, which means he can then drop on the tanks. I feel like this is still a pretty good push from Royal overall. Uh, like, Mini looks like he should be able to end up holding this. Uh, but, yeah, I think, I think he's actually traded out, killed a lot of Dragoons here, kept some pressure on, and that's kind of forced Mini to make more units. Mini does not have his third up in mind. He did start his third base over at 3 o'clock. I actually missed when he started that because it's been so action-packed. But, uh, you know, at least that gives Royal an option of possibly, like, coming back across the map with a secondary attack. Well, I think this attack has basically been stopped. When the last siege tank and turret fall, and there's no way to set anything up, it does seem like it would be diminishing returns for Terran to keep pushing and try to set up a foothold further out. Shuttle speed's done. More gates are coming down. A lot of times when you have um, Reavers at play and you've held off any kind of two-base attack, there's a lot more opportunities for the Terran, uh, excuse me, for the Protoss to just kind of keep moving, keep trying to hit other locations. The third base is always going to be late in situations like this. Some Terrans just take a much later third base, like just throw down more factories. We don't see what it's going to be just yet, but... Would you agree, Artosis? It seems like probably more factories is going to be the, the smarter play. Yeah, yeah. I think you do need to kind of try to keep the pressure on. You know, he traded for a lot of Dragoons there. So you know that Mini has to produce a lot of units. I think going up to five or six facts here is probably going to be your most flexible option. Where, like, maybe you can attack. If you can't, I guess you can make a third base. But right now, Mini flying in. He has a speed shell. Ooh, drops on a mine there. But, yeah, of course he picks it up. We saw game one here today. Yeah, this guy uh, does not apparently let things die to mines ever. Seems Great shots here from the <laughs> Reaver. Maybe a greedier move um, to uh, go for the tank over the Vulture. But uh, this is really a position that I think Mini is very comfortable in. There's a lot of different tech paths he can take. In fact, it doesn't even seem like he's taking you know one of these definitive arbiter tech paths or carrier tech paths that we were talking about um, earlier on. Mm -hmm. Instead, it seems like it might just be going for Psy Storm, getting some more shuttles, keeping the Reavers very active, yeah, uh, and growing. I think you're right. I think that is what it is. Like I, I, I believe he's going to go ahead and. Uh, go for those like Psy Storm drops and everything. He's very good at that style. And of course, if you're trying to attack across the map, I feel like he should have enough to hold that. So hopefully for Royal's sake, he's taking a look. Yeah, he's scanning a little bit, checking what Mini has. And I think you just have to take a third base here. I think I think there's no real choice for an attack. I just, you're not gonna have enough, I believe, right? I don't think you can, can move out at all. It's, uh, you know, whenever you have Terran commit hard on two bases and they lose, it's going to be a very passive game for them if they want to be in this. But right now, Terran is moving out, and it seems like most of what Mini has is over on the left side of the map. So this could be kind of a funny uh, bit of a base tradey position. He's going to fly right in into the natural. This is crazy. He's taken out the turret. He has one shuttle left to pick up if he needs, uh, and he's going to go in the main. Oh, man. Going to try to take out these missile turrets really, really quickly, killing a lot of SCVs. The Zealots tanking for those tanks. Now, Mini is losing his 3 o'clock expansion during this, but is he dealing enough damage that it's okay? Well, the, all the SCVs are over here. 
All he has to do is just start firing Scarabs in there, and all the workers are going to be gone. The Dragoons are going to come up the ramp. I think in these positions, Protoss always wins, by yeah, the way. Yeah. If you get inside their main and, and you get the Reaver out here and start killing everything from the factory, all you need to do is get like a Reaver or anything that can hold off a DT, I guess. Oh, yeah. Dude. Sorry, he beat me to it. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the way to beat Terran. This is it. I can't believe. Dude, what is this new thing that he's doing? Amazing. It's so. It's it, it's like so obvious that this is the way to play the game now. Okay, he just so, counters in yeah. there. He, he he goes for turrets. He makes sure something kills a scanner on the way. He doesn't care about his third base. You're the stupid Terran that tried to go all the way across the map to attack him when he has DT tech. You know when I said he's not going for any kind of crazy powerful tech like arbiters or carriers. Yeah. When I say that I'm 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 basically saying he's going to go for. T uh, uh, sorry, Templars with Psystorm and Shuttles. What I'm not appreciating as I'm watching each of Mini's games is he's got the DT Ace up his sleeve. Yeah. So that there's no way that Terran can hit him. It's really, really smart. All these early timings don't have science vessels in them. The fact that he is yeah. just diving on commsats, it's like, yeah, it's not like he's building turrets for these quick timing pushes, right? Like, you're not building a turret while you're doing yeah. these. The, well, this attack, but I I don't know why we're showing this one. Like, uh, we should be showing. showing yeah, I don't know that who's picking one. the highlight reels of the studio today. I'm like, yeah. we need to go back to the actual part where the game was run. Yeah. Here. The, it's so funny. What about the things so, that matter? Some of the parts they're picking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like inconsequential because this had very little to do with the uh, fight later on. Uh, Mini did do a great job holding here, though. He knows exactly how to kind of um, straddle these positions and. and, and get Dragoons that might trade in and die, but at least take out the tanks and soften the overall foothold that uh, Terran has. Dude, but I, I didn't realize, I by the way. I wish we could go back and see that other moment. Yeah, uh, Mini was up 14 workers here. That's much more than I thought it would be. Like, I was yeah. looking at this thinking maybe Next. he was up 7, 8 workers, but 14 is, like, kind of absurd. Yeah, well, this is Nexus first, you know, the the, the yeah. power that you have behind this. It's why a lot of pushes from Terran, you'll see Protosses just die out, ones that look like this. But um, when you have that Nexus up so fast, the extra workers you get that allow you to make extra buildings and get everything else out and get like a third Nexus even, is crazy. Mm. It's why the most important moments in all games are in the first couple minutes when you have interactions because those effects, they ripple through where everybody can be later on. Yeah, that so, is for sure. Uh, oh, my God. That's a 2-0. I almost forgot about Oh, yeah. One. <laughs> Actually, I was waiting <laughs> for our next map. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. More PBT coming up. Mini moves on against Barracks for that final spot to escape from round uh, group B. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
근데 그거는 저조라도 내 정도가 상관없지 않나요? 아니 항상 그랬습니다. 매 시즌, 매 시즌, 매 시즌 그랬습니다. 그러면 또또 또 다른 주장이 있나요? 홍대용이 다 존재를 많이 해봤니? <웃음> 아 결승까지 못 가본 선수기 때문에 다전제 맵의 중요성을 다알 수가 없다? 그렇게까지 느껴본 적이 없었을 것 같은데 저는 진짜 우승 시즌 때 그걸 경험으로 느껴가지고 이제 아 진짜 누가 비호감 테란 아니랄까 봐 근데 이게 또 테란이라서 그렇고 저그라서 그럴 수도 있어요 근데 성재용도 약간 저랑 비슷한 결의 스타일이라서 비슷한 공감을 할것 같은데 그러니까 저도 이제 판짝에 어. 자신이 있는데 뭐맵 순서가 어떻게 되든 간에 그거는 별로 그래도 맵 순서가 영향은 크게, 있잖아요 크게 영향이 있다고 생각하고 예를 들어서 이제 이번에 16강을 한다 그러면 김치부이 그 우승 시즌 말고 맛이 간것 같아가지고 <웃음> 전 이번 시즌 전체적으로 이제 그 조회 제한테 권한 있으면 김지성 뽑을 것 같아요. 전체적으로 요새 못하더라고요. <웃음> 어 김치볼 맛이 갔다는데요? 저는 마택이 안 갔는데 네. 성대형이 조금 잘해줬어요. 아, 옛날엔 그냥 운영하면 이긴단 말이었는데 <웃음> 아, 요새 좀 잘하더라고요. 아, 그래서. 아 근데 기세가 이거는 김성대 승입니다. <웃음> 기세가. 지호가 게임 내쪽 말고 착한 척하네요. 아. 네, 불좀 켜줄래? 내 의자 좀 보게 오늘 내 기분? 각도로 말할게 이 바퀴 내 무게가 다 담아질까? 하루만 네 의자에 몇 시간이고 싶어 알고 싶어 너의 커스텀 값 만들어봐 네 의자에 꿀려 꿀려 All right, we're back. This has been a hell of a group, Artosis. I mean, it's been super special, unique games uh, in the early game. Uh, uh, very clean play all around from everybody, but also I'm really learning about the PVT matchup right now with yeah. what Mini's shown us so far. Well, these are some uh, technical things. Imagine trying to do that and you don't get the comm sats and they scan and kill your DTs in the game. It's over, right? <laughs> like, so yeah. I, this is not going to work every time for everyone, but Mini has such a great feel on what he's doing. He's definitely way outplaying his opponents here today. Like, it, yeah, he lost that game to Barracks. Dude, he lost like every probe at the beginning of the game and still almost made a draw out of it. Uh, he He's really, he's doing a great job here today. It's been something else to see him, you know, play the way he is. I think he's still got a better shot at beating Barracks here than Barracks does to beat him. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm expecting him to win this. But, uh, you know, Barracks might have some good builds. I'm glad to see he uh, vetoed Neo Dark Origin. I would never want to play Mini on that map. Uh, that is not a terrible map lineup here for Barracks. I think, uh, you know, Mini is going to be very favorable on Retro, but the other two are pretty even, I think. Our map is Citadel, and it's Mini here in the top left, Barracks in the bottom left. Um, guys, one more plug here. As we, as we always do, for every day of an ASL, we do two plugs for the Patreon. This is plug number two. Uh, if you can, sign up, support the cause. It really means the world to us. And we wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I know you guys are enjoying this season like we are. And hopefully many, many, many more. You know, I used to actually have a fear because StarCraft never gets patched. I did have a fear that eventually a matchup would be solved. 
and it would ruin the game. And it just seems like there's just... It just seems like that happened now with Minnie <laughs> versus Parrot. <laughs> Dude, what if, what if Minnie has now discovered the equivalent of what Bisu started doing with Corsair DT, right? Where it's like, oh, no, no, no. What you do is you deny the detection and the cloaked units kill them. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> in this, in, in, well, in Terran versus Protoss? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so crazy because, like, in the old days... Uh, there were concepts like, and it's this still applies today, but like using DTs and shuttles to bait out scans to where eventually they can't, mm -hmm. they don't have a scan, your DT can drive them off of a, a certain piece of land or deny an expansion, or an Arbiter can come in and do damage. But you never think of just diving in and killing both the scanners and then just holding while you do so much damage to them. So I've got a lot to say about this. Last season we saw a mini win like this. Mm-hmm where he did the, it was actually Reaver, Zealot, and Templar drop in the main, and I think this is why it didn't stick with me as much. It was an incredible game. Yeah. That was season 16, I believe. Uh, and I remember trying to emulate it, and, uh, you know, it was weird, because I'm like, because he both dropped Templars and stormed all the workers and killed the scanner, and it yeah. was almost like he won in so many levels, it was kind of confusing. Yeah. I almost couldn't learn from it. Yeah. Where I'm like, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? That doesn't seem right. It seems like you've, you've won, and you could have either stormed all the workers uh, and and uh, won the game by barely holding or sent Reavers in and killed the scanner. Mm -hmm. But you did both. But now that I've seen him do this two more times today, I just realized all this is is like a, a really healthy way to punish a Terran that stays back on five factories for too long. That's all it is. It's a smart way where... Um, you know, so many times Protosses will try to counterattack, and and um, you know Terran has to run back, but the push is an inevitability that it will get in there and kill the the Protoss. But using the second shuttle, the tank, uh, the turret shots to get into the natural with the, sh the the Reavers, and then the Reavers just target down the turrets. By the way, they don't go for SCVs. I think that's mm. something that for a lot of people that play all the time, that's kind of confusing. Where, like, every time you drop, you're trying to kill workers. He doesn't care about that. He's killing the turrets, clearing a path for the Observer mm. and Dragoons. Um, the SCVs are going to leave anyways, and they're going to be cornered. And then you just, you know, whether it's the Reavers killing the scanner in the main or the Dragoons that come in and kill the scanner at the natural, you have denied Terran all the tools they need to close you out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's genius. It, it's it so is. smart. It is. Uh, sorry, there's a bunker <laughs> rush coming, and I'm like talking about I'm, meta I'm stuff. Glad Anyways, you, toast, you go. I'm glad you took the strat I was sorry, talking everybody. about before, where it's instead of casting the games, we only talk about Minnie's game. Uh, but yeah, this <laughs> sorry, is a, it's a Nexus sorry, first. <laughs> it's a Nexus first against a factory expand. Look at this. He's slowing Whoa. it right now with that probe. That's that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Mini just buying all this extra time. Uh, and okay, so basically, this was a just like a 12 gas, uh, you know, end scout finds the Nexus first, uh, you know, in a close spawn. So he's absolutely going for the SCV Marine Vulture Rush. But two goons are going to be out shortly. Notice how many pulls the Zealots way over to the side up that ramp so he can flank. Because normally you block with the SCVs, but if the Zealots are up the ramp, that's, you know, the SCVs are going to be on the wrong side and the Zealots can get hits on the Marines. So that's the plan here. The probes are going to come from one side, the Zealots from the other, and I think Mini is going to be able to block this easily. It looks like it. One Zealot's getting uh, stuck in the back over here. He's not getting that much damage off here, but if he finally does spill through here. The probes with some really nice surrounds here are able to wipe these Marines. It's just two Dragoons left over here. They're going to take out the... Well, I mean, the damage distribution is kind of wild over here. It looks like he will be able to take out the Vulture. Uh, and maybe this final Marine, you know, it's funny. Dragoons are so tanky that they can, over time, fighting Marines one-on-one, -on -one, take off a comical amount of them. Yeah. yeah. It, look at that. Six kills on that. The, the rush is destroyed. And this is a game loss like 99% of the time when Terran fails yep. this push because they generally don't even have an add-on. They have no additional units. And Protoss has that extra base with so many more workers, so much more potential for different plays. Yeah, a Barracks is probably going to GG in just a second. I mean, this is looking really rough. In fact, the Marines are kind of body blocking the Vultures from returning. This other Vulture back here, I think it's pretty low on HP as well. Yeah. 
He's he's killing everything. Like the SUVs have to come fight. A third comes up. Oh my god. You know, Barracks doesn't want to have this game end that quickly, but I think it's going to. <laughs> good surround. I mean, this is wild. Oh. Yeah. Mini's so yeah, good you that know, he actually is... targets the hurt SCV in the back with all of his goons to free the, the trapped, surrounded Dragoon there. Now, he could try to just gun these down. Is he going to be a, a Bisu Jr.? <laughs> Bisu Jr. Ooh. Yep. Oh, okay. uh, no. Ooh, good hit. Yeah, good that's... Hit. So hard to do. Now there's a hidden uh, factory with vultures making. Okay. So let's say he banks two vultures. He could get in there and kill a lot of workers. The supply is 42 to 29, and that's a lot of probes there for many. But we all know how quickly vultures can change the probe count. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what he needs to do because you have to win off of this. You can't just like do some damage. Uh, I think he needs to lay mines behind, push the dragoons into those, and then have an overwhelming attack. I don't think it's about killing probes. I think it's about, oh, God, he showed the vulture. Oof. I, I don't know that any noticed it. Yeah, I think you're right. If he, he did, he should know exactly it. what's happening. Some, especially when you're doing this, like, stutter step move in to try to kill mines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just won't see the minimap at all. That's true. Like, he might have just not seen that blip above him. Okay, Man. this vulture gets in. Okay. Now, does Mini notice right now? Well, he notices now. <laughs> he has not. Yeah. Mine's there's, gonna be um, in front of those mine taste. It's pretty, pretty decent play here from, from Barracks. He's gonna deny siege mode. Uh oh. <sighs> this game is getting really weird. Hey, there are still three mines in this vulture. Yeah. I don't know that he's gonna be able to get anything off. And like, even if you're laying these mines, like, it, all Mini has to do is, like, make a wall or just stand Dragoon somewhere and block the Vultures from moving around. Like, it, one factory Vultures without speed are not going to do anything. GG. And uh, that was that was a pretty dominating game for Mini right there. Yeah. Yeah, impressive stuff. Um, Mini moves on. Or, when he wins that game. Um, and, I don't know. I mean, you know, Barracks tried his best. I think... Mini clearly has practice holding these these aggressive attacks here um, with Nexus first. It seems like he's basically going Nexus first, ready for Terrence to try to trip over themselves attacking in, and he just shuts it down. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's hard to hold on, like, or rather to bust when it's the two-gate variant, right? Like, if you go two-gate, if you're cutting yeah. probes and you actually make those first two zealots and you follow up with goons right away, you skip range... Like, you have a lot of units. You bring your probes out. And the, the problem is always the Zealots flanking. If the Zealots are just in front from the beginning, it's actually not hard to break because the SCVs block them and you kill everything. Uh, but when they flank like that, it's really, really difficult, which I think is part of the reason why he goes Nexus first so much. He just knows how to handle it. We're going to go to Retro now for map number two. Uh, I think it's realistic Mini goes for Nexus first again. Yeah. I don't see why he would stop. He seems to be having no problem versus anybody. It seems like the Terrans right now, their minds are in the wrong spot trying to attack into this, and Mini's making the game pretty easy for himself. Maybe it's time for a, a BBS from Barracks here. Just just make your couple Raxes in the center of the map, hope that he goes Nexus first and kill him. <laughs> it happens a lot, man. It, it's pretty good, and sometimes you kill the Protoss anyways if they're not ready. Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys, game two. Coming up right now here, Mini versus Barracks continuing on. Mini in the bottom right. And cross spawns, by the way, Barracks in the top left. Will it be a Nexus first, Tasteless? Yes or no? I think so. I you think, think so Nexus again? First. This man only has two modes. <laughs> Nexus first or crazy all-ins. <laughs> and if it gets past that, Artostas, the Reavers kill your scanners, and the DT stop That's the right. and vultures. If things go wrong, he just gets rid of your detection, uses cloaked stuff. It's it's brilliant. It's a yeah. foolproof plan. Like, he's he's pretty much solved yeah. it, you're right. The game's going to die in the next two years as everyone copies Mini here. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he will go Nexus first again. That would be that would be quite the play. I kind of feel like he won't. Oh, I like it. The Euro team's down here. 
I don't know who the Euro team is, but they're here, man. It's undeniable. Yeah. They're wearing their shirts. Well, um, yeah, I think there's no way that he doesn't go Nexus first, Artosis. Maybe. Maybe. Like, I, I, I feel like in my brain, proper preparation says don't go Nexus first, just play a normal game. But you're right. He's going sure. Nexus first again. Like, and that is, that's mini to a T, isn't it? I guess Barracks should have made a well, proxy Barracks. The thing is, is like, how often do we ever see proxy barracks versus Nexus first in a pro match? We rare. know that like double proxy barracks. It's rare. It'll happen on the ladder when, like, right now on the ladder, I, I probably it's nothing but proxy barracks right now because Smitty's been going for uh, <laughs> Nexus first. But yeah. in pro matches, it doesn't seem like the Terrans want to go there. I think we had like one game where Light did it, and that was it. Yeah. It because if you if you run into anything else, like we had that game, I believe White versus Rain, if I'm remembering correctly, not from their finals, but from a different season where he went double proxy barracks one game and he killed all but like two probes, but Rain had range, so he just won anyways. Like he lived and had Dragoon yeah. range and just killed him because, you know, if you go for something like that and Protoss gets any sort of tech, you're done. So this is the two gate version again. Yeah, he's just gonna go for the same build. Saying, come at me, Terran. Now, in cross spawns, I don't think you will ever see a rush. But you're basically playing kind of an odds advantage opener here. There's a two out of three chance they are your neighbor, and he, not in the other side of the map. He actually has two SCVs out in the map. And he has... Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. And he has zero gas, but he started his geyser. So it looks like it's like a weird modified gasless expand he should just be making a nexus here um like marines are being kind of sent across the map it's a very weird He's build like we rushing. yeah yeah th this is to try to force them to pull some probes out so that you can micro against the probes like if you get it up great but it's a really weird build from barracks the fact that he sent the second scv and and started his gas without a probe being in his base is kind of surprising but okay Oh, oh, he's sending more SCVs? I don't think so, man. This does not look good to me. I almost feel like he knows this shouldn't work, but he's uncomfortable yeah. and stressed out, and so he's just going to kind of go with, like, what he thinks, you know, even if it's inferior in some ways, this maybe will work out better. This SCV is going to finish that bunker. It had a very fortunate uh, move to the side away from those probes. And... Oh, my oh. God. Oh, oh, oh. Dude! He stopped both. What? Yeah, that that was pretty good. And uh, there's a huge problem here as well because he sent those SCVs. Like, I mean, just looking at this game, we knew that wasn't going to work. You know, like that. Yeah. This isn't a thing. And it, we've talked about this in previous ASL seasons. If you're going gasless expand and you try to rush your opponent at the same time, you can't do all that. You can't do that. You can't send SCVs and Marines across the map while expanding and getting your factory. That's not a thing. Like, you're trying too many things at once. Terran is un incapable of doing that. So now I'm looking at this, and it's like, oh, God, you already gave up SCVs. Yeah, I guess he killed a couple probes. But I feel like Mini, like, this position just looks better for Mini for me. Well, this is so much better for Mini, it's insane. Um... You can't both, like, rush like that, then make a command center back at home. You can actually maybe even run by this. Yeah. There is a world where you... Yeah, so this is the little zealot run by. You just use the Dragoon to tank the shots, and you run this right up the ramp and just keep hitting stuff. Oh, man. And it can force the Marines to pull out. He's um, going to run the, the two guns. In fact, in. he cancels the add-on. Yeah. Watch this. He'll run the two guns, and I bet you... Because it's two Marines unloaded, so it's like one Marine in that bunker. You don't need to respect one Marine this, in a bunker. This was a PVT Ocean's Eleven move here, getting those zealots <laughs> in. And um, now, yeah, you're right. He could run the Dragoons, and he might not. But, like, yeah. the fact that the add-on is forced to cancel is crazy. Man. Like, the tank of the Siege Mode or whatever other upgrades is going to be that much later. The Robo's already done. Dragoon range is coming just fine. Well, uh, you know, I guess he didn't run by, so the Dragoon range is going to be fantastic, especially considering he canceled the add-on, then had to restart it. So you're, like, a yeah. long ways out from having Siege Mode or anything like that. 
the Reaver follow up as well. So this is going to basically force Barracks into a turtled siege mode and turret position, which means that Mini can just expand and do like basically anything he wants. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the issue here is that, and look, this is one of the, the big features of Fast Nexus is you really have to know what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Um, and I do feel, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier in, in this cast, but it did seem almost like Barracks was demoralized, even just seeing the Nexus first and cross bonds. Yeah. It kind of just went for it anyways. Yeah. Um, well, I can, that, and yeah, obviously I, I, can, not, I can understand that, Tasis. That's for sure. Sure. No, me too. I mean, I, no, I've had many games where I'm against somebody who's better than me, and then I have an opening I'm not confident with, and I, I see how they're playing, and I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. I don't know if I have ever won in this position, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And and I end up doing something impulsive or cheesy or stupid, and I, I kind of felt for Barracks when we saw that happen there because, you know, long-distance bunker rush at, at, from there, and then Mini shuts it down so perfectly. It's crazy. Yeah, it was that was like the best block ever. If you get the, those Marines in there, it's like, okay, well, that's annoying. But at least they have to stay and deal with it. Instead, he gets Zalas to go across the map, run up the ramp, cause some damage, cause you to cancel your add-on. And now we're going to have a Reaver fly in. He does have an eBay. He does have an armor. He does have two factories. So Barracks is doing a pretty good job of trying to uh, get back from here. <coughs> but... This is definitely not looking very good for him right now. Like, Mini is in control. He's dictating the pace of the game completely. He's going to come in here and start to carve open an entrance where those turrets are. A dive comes in. He's going to try to force this up. The Goliath can get underneath this. This may be an overextension here by Mini. Oh, my God. Two HP on that. Oh, oh no. He's still alive. Oh, and he's going for the minerals now. The Reaver could just start... <laughs> Okay, the Dragoons are going to come in here. Oh, he probably should have dove on the tank. Yeah, here we go. He's going to come in and hit that tank. He can come right back out and then play the range game. That tank is taken out. He pulls back. A little bit clumsy here from Mini. He does have enough Dragoons if he moves them up. It's one Dragoon shot. If there's an SCV repairing and a Dragoon uh, attacking, one SCV can repair, one Dragoon hit. But once you uh, get uh, more Dragoons, the health will go down, although not all these Dragoons are attacking. That's one of the trickier things to do in the game is to make the Dragoon both attack the bunker and stay out of range of it. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, uh, normally, like, people use hold position, which is why you can pop a Marine out and take shots or, like, even dodge shots there to make you repair less. Well, the trick is you got to do hold position first and then yeah. a click on the bunker. Oh, that's But smart. even getting it in hold position range is weird. Like, there's moments where you're like, seriously? This has to be in range. And then it's either, yeah. either being hit from the bunker or you're too far away. Well, right now, uh, Mini has that third base up in mining. Definitely has a big advantage. Look at this. He's up 24 supply right now at 9 minutes. 65 against 90. That's pretty wild. Uh, it takes a fourth Nexus. We are nowhere near an attack from Barracks or an expansion from Barracks. Four base crushes two base. Yeah, this is very scary. Reavers already being brought back into this. Normally, you'd see more gateways um, before that fourth base, but I think the damage has been so obvious to Barracks that Mini knows there's no way he can be attacked right now. Mm -hmm. Only just now we're going to have the sixth factory finish. Uh, and so, I mean, this is tough. Again, I'm not saying Barracks cannot win, but it's just looking so good here for Mini. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's going up to his five factories. Maybe there's a world in which he picks off the shuttle and he can do a counter push because Mini has taken that fourth Nexus. But I, I guess the problem is I feel like he's not going to pick that off. He's going to get stalled. The gates are going to come up. And then Mini is sitting here trying to hold on against, you know, just a standard uh, five fact, but he's got way more income than normal. Look at this push. Mini is so scary. He comes in. It is like a little bit of an overextension. Honestly, yeah. Barracks did really well back there. Yeah. I thought that might have been a little bit worse. But you can see the confidence in Mini. Once he takes the bunker out, he's like, all right, we're moving in. Sends the Zella to tank the shots. The Dragoons move forward. The uh, Reavers micro there. 
But yeah, Barracks does come out ahead. Th that's probably the best of all possible outcomes for Barracks' sake right now in this yeah. match. I definitely agree with you on that. They, I think that that was not needed by Mini. I'm actually also very surprised that Mini threw down his second Robo before more gates. Like, he only had four gates. He's like, you know what? I need, with this fourth base and almost losing my Reaver and Shuttle, I need a second Robo. It's like, well, I, here you just need to make a lot of units. You need to make sure you have speed zealots, you have some observers out, so you can oh. clear mines. Like, that's, that's what you, you know got to do. I think you need the second Robo really early, and here's why. is because the only way you're going to lose to Terran is if they get to some weird side of retro and set up and you can't get your army over there. So I think mm. the idea is you just have just boatloads of shuttles, and then wherever they are, you can attack with some of your ground army, but you just drop everything on top of it. Ah. Uh, well, because... I, yeah. No, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, like, in, in my mind, I look at this, and because you're four base... If you break his army one time, you should win. Right? Like if you if you that group of units we see on screen, if you kill that as many, I don't see how you ever lose. Like, oh man, he loses uh, that it, shuttle. That, but it, you gotta be careful. But the thing is, I think that the, the problem from uh, the Protoss' perspective is a good Terran just won't let you ever get near their army. They'll just like turtle it out and play keep away. You could take more of the map, but I think when you get mass shuttles like this, the edge it's gonna give you is that. You can, like, okay, so let's say that all of his mech stuff is up here at this uh, soon-to-be third base at 12 o'clock. You can send shuttles into his main. Or if he's, you know, if he's really not, uh, if he's neglecting that third base, you can go there instead. Or if he tries to push mm. you, let's say he went all the way down and hit that uh, Protoss' third base from, like, the left side of that. It's hard to get to. I mean, this has been my experience, at least with Retro. So I feel like the double shuttle play, there's, there's something to it for sure. <laughs> Well, he probably needs it to fly over the turrets to kill the commsats, so he can use DTs to clean this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> we already right, solved this. Already, yeah. cast go, yeah, every game's going to end the same way, but we're going to try to figure out a different thing that's going on, only to find out it's the exact same concept. <laughs> yeah. It's like, guys, I just I need to make sure he doesn't have detection. It's as simple as that. Like, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I understand. Uh, now, Mini moving up the map. He has the double shuttle. It looks like he's going for a counterattack. Barracks has a lot of units out in the center. So, dude, what if he actually does run up here and target commsats? What if that actually is I the plan? I think he might. Oh, my I God. I think he might, Artosis. Maybe. Well, all he has to do is get on top of, of um, you know, th this area up in the main. We're, we're in a similar situation. Artosis, it's shooting the commsat. Dude. Let's see. What, okay, he actually lets the Reaver shoot SCVs that time. But... He, he, so much of his army is across the map. Now we have this very messy fight. And this is a better army for Barracks that we have down there. But yeah, targets the commsat. Oh, God. Barracks has seen this before. Oh, my God. I think this time it's not going to work, but this is literally what Mini does to <laughs> every game. This is so crazy. <laughs> and this is just the new thing, man. You go Nexus first. You play kind of aggro. And then when they're attacking with a big army, you just kill their comp stats and kill it no matter what. <laughs> this is crazy play from many man. All right, he's gonna just try to use some splash damage shared on these tanks to, to thin the numbers out. Oh, oh my he's god. back. Oh my god, 17 kills. And this, on this Reaver river. has not just that, but some tattoos of dead comp stats from previous <laughs> games. Tattoos of dead comp stats. That's, That's right. Hardcore. Just burning comm stats all over his back. Like, wow, right. you were in the Air Force, energy. Reaver? It's like, yes, I was in the 3rd Shuttle Regiment. We killed two comm stats <laughs> on Retro. <laughs> Paved the way for the Cape Boys. <laughs> Dude, he's doing it. He's doing it. There's very it's limited scans, and he so just crazy. is massing DTs. This is tasteless. I'm going to take a week off the ladder. I don't want to play against this. this. Yeah, guys, Terran <laughs> players, you might want to go on vacation. This is... It's not going to be fun. I just... You know, it's so funny. We had that one game last season, and I thought that's so interesting that that game looked like that. And I'm like, oh, this is like what he does. I'm sorry. Well, we still have the okay, push so going on. He got a secondary commsat. Does he have a scan? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. I can't even believe that he won just about every game tonight by killing comsat stations. The fact That's that Protoss gets another wing condition, 
I feel like this is turning <laughs> into like Age of Empires or something where it's like, yeah, you uh, can like build this weird relic thing to win as well. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there. You know, if Protoss gets eight carriers, they win. If they keep you on three base, they win. If they kill your commsats, they win. If they go to proxy oh. gate and you went fast command, you went, they win. It's like, oh my god, Mini just keeps unlocking ways to kill Terrans. It's just I, we've never seen it so clearly illustrated. <laughs> Like, it happened again today early on. I went, oh, I remember this. It's that weird thing where he doesn't have skinners. Then it happened again. We had three games where he won with that. And yeah. even in this last game, it looked like it wasn't going to be maybe as strong, and it still was. But here we go. Thank you, Afrika Team Production, for showing us the part of the game that doesn't matter. Oh, okay, man. so we got <laughs> the Bunker Rush. This is too funny. Yeah, this Bunker so Rush was gonna... bad, man. Why are you doing this? Like, yeah, I think you're right. He was frustrated. Yeah. No, he was he was tilted for sure. Very good micro for Mini as well. You can see the, the right. probe kind of moving back and kiting the, the <laughs> SCV there even. Why are we watching this part of the game? Dude, yeah. It's so crazy. We must have a new person running this the replays is, today. It must be someone different to replays in the studio because normally they're pretty on point. But right now I'm like, huh, all right, well... <laughs> You know, I'm like, so surely the, the, the Terran left, uh, that was you know, a sick moment 10 right seconds yeah. after that Marine was stopped. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. This went all the way into uh, a fourth base Protoss. What? It, it was beautiful right. uh, micro, but even if the Marine gets in the bunker, he still kills the bunker and probably doesn't lose anything. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Like, I think uh... some people think that when the bunker finishes and the Marine gets in, it's like, well, now it's over. It's like, no. No, it's fine. That's one Marine in a bunker. All right. Uh, okay, guys, interview time with Mini. Hide your comm stats. And that does it for Group B of the round of 16 of ASL Season 17, as we have our second place finisher advancing through today in Mini. Congratulations. Thank you. Once again, making it into the round of eight through the elimination match today. Uh, this is your seventh time, all in all. Having to go through the elimination match must have given you a bit of a headache. Uh, how does it feel to drive this good result home? In the first game, it didn't occur to me that he could play that build. I got very confounded. Uh, I did create an opportunity for a reversal, but I couldn't do it. I didn't manage to turn things around. I was so cheesed off about it at the end. Now, honestly, thinking about that first game against Barracks, he came really well prepared. It seemed like the game was about to tip over just off of that vulture drop, but somehow he almost managed to force a draw uh, with Dark Templar, with, with Reavers. It would be difficult for anyone to have predicted the game to go in such a direction. It went on and on, but in the end, he snuck an SCV out, landed his CC at the 5 o'clock. I bet you were livid when you scouted that. How did that make you feel? At that point, I thought I had caught all the workers, so there's no chance for a draw. But then I guess he still had money. Oh no, wait, it was that one half-dead SCV. I didn't think of that. Originally, when I thought how to turn the game around, I wanted to build a citadel, but it didn't make. I knew that there's no other way to do so other than by rushing Dark Templar as quickly as I could. I tried to do so, but unfortunately, it didn't work. It seemed enough, uh, it seemed to be enough to get you to wake up because you then presented Royal and Barracks with something straight out of a Terran nightmare. In the loser's match against Royal, you went for mana pylons and even a battery to quickly seal the deal. And then, starting with the second map and going all the way into the elimination match against Barracks, you went 12 Nexus three times. Now, you know how to block cheeses very well, so there's no reason not to have done so. But is there anything else that made you keep going for the 12 Nexus? I practiced a lot of versus Terran this time, but the more I played, the harder it got, to be honest. I was confident going into the first game, so it's a shame I couldn't show that. I practiced the standard maps and it was so difficult. I think that out of all the Protoss, I'm the best at playing 12 Nexus and stopping Cheese. So I thought, ah, let's just practice that. 
And that's what I had done. Whether it's blocking Marines from getting into a bunker with just a single zealot, or even not letting vultures out of the Terran main with a probe, you're a real rush blocking evil spirit, is what people say. You really showed you're not somebody to, to be trifled with. With how thrilling your games were today, it's really raising many people's expectations for your performance in an extended series in the round of eight. I bet you want to fix whatever is lacking today, is that right? Uh, for starters, Solki is in group A, right? Now in group C and D, uh, well, recently I am struggling against Terran, and it's something I feel in my practice, so actually I want to meet a Terran in the round of eight, you know? Against Protoss, I do well online, but I have no confidence, and honestly, Terran, I can't play that much up, but I want to meet one in the round of eight anyway. Well, so far, we haven't had any Terrans make it through to the quarterfinals. We'll have to see if any make it through Group C and D. In any case, you are hoping to meet one. It's not possible right now, but maybe they will make it through over the next two weeks. I can't say for sure if any of the Terrans are as hopeful to meet you, should they advance to the round of eight. You were so scary today. With this being your seventh time in the quarterfinals, I bet you are hoping to go even further. Any words for the fans or your practice partners? I expect there's a lot of fans who are worried after I lost the first game, so thanks the he uh, thank the heavens I made it through. I'll have a showing that befits the extended series starting in the round of eight now. Um, I would like to thank Mong, JYJ, Rush, Light, and Sharp. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, Queen. We prepared one build, uh, one build with Queen. And it was good, but then Calm said he would practice with me, so I tried it and I lost miserably. So I thought that if I would also lose if I played Hero today in the studio. Anyway, uh, thanks to these guys who helped me practice. Okay, congratulations once again and we'll see you in the round of eight. Thank you for the interview. And that does it for our chat with today's second place finisher, Mini. So this is how it goes. Mini ends up winning the ASL here today by absolutely crushing face by killing commsats. It was crazy. I almost forgot Hero was in the group. Uh, he got out so quickly and so easily. These two, I, I told you, Tasteless, like, Royal's great, but Mini and, and Hero are another level. Yeah, truly they are. Um, group C is going to be next week. We have Rush, Shuttle, Best, and Light. And then Group D will be the very next day, Sharp, Mind, Action, and Snow. Yeah, uh, I'm especially excited about Group D. Group D is crazy. Group D is crazy. I, I do think Action Snow will get out of that. But for Group C, I think Rush and Light, man. But maybe Best can squeeze it. I think we're going to have a great racial distribution at the end of the day. I feel like it's going to be three Zerg, three Protoss, three Ta or two Terran, which is going to give us, like, the best round of eight that we may have ever had. I think so. Um, we're halfway through the round of 16, and uh, we've already got some amazing players moving through here. Not Terran heavy so far. Um, you know, we had a lot of Terrans to start the season off. It was disproportionately Terran heavy, but we have been pulling the weaker Terrans. We've been killing their comm stats. Yeah, yeah. You know how uh, zombies run towards, like, a building and, like, the, the dead ones on the bottom become the ramp for the, the live ones to get in? That's the Terrans Yes, this I season. do know that. Okay, yeah, that's they are. That's a very standard thing for zombies. So They are uh, ramp zombies. <laughs> they're ramp zombies. For the faster... They're, they're ramp the, zombies for so the that, zombie. Yeah, so that light can get into your base and infect you. And uh, yeah, okay. That's Anyways, right. This, he, he just has to bite you one time. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Uh, I think that just about does it for us, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks again for all the support on the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Anything else from you, Tasteless? No, that's it. Watch out for the, your uh, your keep your comp stats safe uh, over this week, guys. It's going to be a rough time on the ladder for uh, TVP. Yep. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>